All right, this week on the High Ground Podcast, we will be talking about all of the Star Wars movies. Uh, we'll be going through our rankings and what we like and uh, dislike about each and every film. So uh, stay tuned right here on the High Ground Podcast. All right. Hello and welcome. Thank you everyone for joining me here on the High Ground Podcast. Uh, I'm excited, uh, super excited to talk about this one because people have been asking me for my rankings. I've been going through all of the different films and things um, on this podcast, so I haven't given them out because they were going to be subject to change, you know? But now that I'm finished, I want to dive back into it and, uh, and go through th- through all of them. But I want to start by having you guys introduce yourselves, you know, who who are you? Um, why do you like Star Wars? How'd you get into it? And also, you know, let us know where we can find, you know, your, your stuff. And I will go to, uh, Geek Theory first. Sounds good. Uh, hello. Um, uh, my name is Derek. Uh, a lot of people know me as Geek Theory on TikTok. And, uh, yeah, how did, why do I like Star Wars? Uh, sci-fi fantasy has always been something that uh, I've really admired. It's, it's great storytelling. And, uh. What got me into it was uh, my parents, my mom actually, when I was really young. I used to borrow movies from my aunt and uh, it was really kind of cool because I found really like great films like Legend and uh, yeah, one day she says, hey, you know what, you should watch this movie. It's got some cute little furry dudes that she really loved. They were Ewoks and so yeah, they, that, the legacy was born and yeah, I just became addicted. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, and also, uh, you gave us your name, but uh, where can we find you? Still making content? Uh, I, I actually just uh, make content exclusively on TikTok at this point. Uh, I used to stream, but uh, I gave it up a little while ago. Awesome. And uh, we will go to uh, Tick Music next. Also, all right. let me know what you guys want me to call you guys. If you want to use your... you, you can call me Tucker. Anyone who's watching this, you're calling me Tick Music. <laughs> all right uh anyways that being said yeah my name's tucker um i'm at tick music on tiktok but the first i is a one because i wanted it to kind of be like dead mouse and he has the five, whatever right um i really like star wars because i think it's like i mean first of all it's just a feel-good kind of thing but it's also a tragedy if you think too hard about it um and i really like the lord of the rings and like marvel and stuff like that and i think star wars is right in the middle of geeky superhero cool save the princess story stuff like that um and also like dark like magic goblins and stuff and star- yeah star wars is right in the middle and i got into star wars when i was a really little kid because the first video game i ever played was star wars Knights of the old republic on the original xbox um and although i couldn't read at the time i could understand what a lightsaber was because i was also watching the phantom menace on our singular vh test vhs tape of the phantom menace and so ever since then i was maybe six years old i've been hooked awesome yeah so, say i mean i was doing empire for for me but absolutely same thing and uh, how about you fallon hi my name is fallon uh my tiktok name is anakin thought i like star wars because i feel like it's an escape from reality and it just makes me really happy and like super nostalgic i actually got into star wars when i was about three So this was before Revenge of the Sith came out. My dad had showed me the three originals first and I was just hooked. The music, the costumes, the actors, just everything. I loved it. So I still feel the same way 17 years later. (laughs) And uh, I mean, a lot of us are still here with you, like been in the fandom for a long time. And even if uh, for anyone new out there as well, it's it's awesome and the cool people in the star wars community are legit the best like it's the best fandom with yeah. the cool people <laughs> yeah, i've met a lot of people yeah uh all right lightning round okay we your what, what is your favorite era of star wars and why and we'll go to uh tucker first uh my favorite is the original trilogy because i am a simp for luke skywalker himself <laughs> Nothing wrong with that, uh, Fallon. The original trilogy, same same thing. Original trilogy, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, you geek there? No, original trilogy, absolutely, hands down. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> you know, for uh, for this ranking episode, I tried to pick people that I thought might have wildly different um, like rankings. So I'm surprised to hear all of you guys original trilogy. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of ruining my plans, but well, that's okay. Didn't want to disappoint. <laughs> I was a prequels fan until this year, so I've still got seventeen years of prequels on my belt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, myself, it's it's the prequels. It's you know I, I did start with with uh, Empire and grew up in the era where we were getting the re-releases, but like the prequels were the first new Star Wars, and I rode that wave, and you know. I certain times thought I was literally the only person that liked him on the planet, but I still I still liked him. I, I still do. Uh, which is odd because none of the prequels are actually in my top three. But I've, Clone Wars did, did a lot for him. We'll, we'll, we'll say that. Uh, but we I took all of your guys' uh, rankings beforehand and put together a list. You know, basically... Whatever your score was, wherever you ranked it, that's the number I gave it. And then I just stacked them highest number to lowest number. So we're going to go through, we're going to, it's going to talk about um, each of these films, you know, where did we personally rank it um, uh, and why, what would we change about it and what do we like about it, right? That means I'm going to force you guys to say things you like about movies that you may not like. Uh, so let's get into it. <laughs> so collectively... Oh, and I should pull up the uh, the non-collective list so I can <laughs> make sure you guys are being honest here. But um, collectively, the lowest ranked film uh, for all of us was Solo, uh, which you know I I thought it was a solid film, but that's okay. <laughs> it definitely sounds good. It just is my least favorite. Yeah, nothing wrong with that, uh, and also. Remember, just because something is the very last thing on the list doesn't mean that you don't like it. I think that's yeah. a huge misconception. Like, doesn't mean you hate it. But uh, yeah, let's let's uh, talk solo and go to uh, uh, go to Geek Theory first. Well, yeah, I I I put solo at like seventh on my list. Um, things that I like about it, I I loved the introduction of characters like Kira. Um, I loved seeing solo act not like Han Solo, if that makes sense. A lot of people hated that. Well, he didn't, he didn't sound like Solo and he didn't, he didn't have the same mannerisms. And I think it's important to recognize that when we're watching that film, we're not seeing Han Solo, the Han Solo that we know. We're seeing a, a, a man who's really just trying to find his way. And I really liked that by the end of the film, you start to see some of those mannerisms and the way he speaks starts to add up into the Harrison Ford Han Solo. Um, things that I didn't like about it, uh, I I felt like it was just, it's going to sound bad because I like cowboy movies. It just felt like too much of a Western for me. Um, and, <laughs> and, and, and not that that's a bad thing. It's just, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I wanted to see uh, a little bit more about why Han specifically didn't believe in the force, why he didn't buy into that and how that kind of tied into his character or his role in, in the other films. Um, because he is quite jaded when it comes to that. And I, and I feel like they didn't really explore that. So that's what I would change. I would, I would dig a little deeper into, into that. Okay. No, that's cool. And I, I can definitely see that it definitely was uh, a Western. There's a, even like the, the train heist scene that you're required and all that stuff. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. How about you Tucker? Uh, I mean, well, first of all, I'm going to say I also put Solo after the sequel, so one of you guys put it at last, and I'm never going to forgive you for that. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I, I, I really liked Solo. That's actually the one I've seen the most recently. Um, and uh, although although a lot of people rag on it because it's like, why did Han Solo need a movie? I thought it totally fit. Um, and especially if um, Solo 2 duo ever comes out. Um, I think I, I do agree. I know, right? I do definitely agree with um, what Derek said about um, like the force, like a lot of the Han Solo character building that you might have expected to be there that you can see in A New Hope. Um, it, it wasn't really there. Um, but I think looking at it, it, it kind of reminds me of how I viewed Star Wars when I was a little kid, which is kind of at the surface level. Um, because at the surface level, it's a really, really fun movie. It's really great. Um, but I don't really enjoy it. It kind of drags with all the coaxium stuff. 
Um, and when they're leaving Kessel, I feel like that bit is a little bit too long. Um, but all that being said, I, um, I think if they had gone and made another movie, which they still might do, um, it will look better. But because it hasn't come out yet, it kind of just think it, we think like they could have done a lot more than they did, which is why it probably can't go above the prequels for somebody. Um, mm-hmm. So if I were to change anything, I definitely agree. I'd add a lot of the stuff that if I was to then watch A New Hope, I would think, oh, that makes sense now instead of just, I know he did this one. Okay. Yeah, I could definitely see that. And uh, are you Fallon? So some things I liked about it were Han Solo was one of my top 10 favorite characters. So I liked how they gave him the opportunity to like have a sort of a backstory movie. And also I really loved Lando and Donald Glover in this movie, which makes me so excited for the Lando series because Lando's also in my top 10. Something that I didn't like, I'm going to agree with you. I felt like it did drag at times. And in the theater, I was like, I don't know if I love this yet but i also do think the genre was kind of different from the other movies which is why i feel like it's my last favorite but it's not even that difference a bad thing it just like wasn't really my thing okay (laughs) sorry i didn't catch the last thing you said my style kind of thing Uh, okay yeah and i I could definitely get that it was very um it was very plot driven, which meant we we didn't get to dive as deep into these characters. Although, I mean, that's but that's exactly why I think we could benefit from a solo too, because that's usually when a, a movie is a trilogy. That's usually what happens. The first one is plot heavy. The second one dives into the characters, and the third one's supposed to wrap everything up, uh, which doesn't always happen. Uh, for me, I I put that at my number eight movie which was uh same as same as tick but um yeah yeah i feel like you guys kind of nailed the head the hit the nail on the head where it was a movie that i wasn't sure we needed going into it not to mention there was a lot going against it at the time when it came out right there was a very lackluster like marketing push there was some backlash from coming so soon after what which i don't know why they made it so soon like i would have just pushed it to december whatever i think that would have made a huge difference on it it was opening up um in the same vicinity as deadpool 2 as well as um infinity war which yes it was about uh like three weeks apart from infinity war but if you know you have a family of five people Trips to the movie theater. I don't know how my parents did it. <laughs> <laughs> Toonie Tuesdays. <laughs> yeah, you have six kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, if you and your wife go to the movies, that's like <laughs> that's like 200 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We're sneaking popcorn in in our, like, sweaters. <laughs> now that is the Honda Onaka style. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um... By the way, if Johnny Depp does sign on and play Hondo Onaka, that would be amazing. Uh, oh. I've started hearing these rumors lately, and like that would be my life. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Take my money. <laughs> All right. So at our number 10 spot, we had The Rise of Skywalker. Um, this one we're going to uh, we're going to take music first. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> That's so funny. That's so... It, it... Okay, so that, I don't know. The reason I think that's funny is because some of our, my more popular videos are me hating on this movie. I do <laughs> not like this movie at all, man. I hate this movie. But uh, in all fairness, some things it does really well. I think the art style is beautiful. Um, and I really like the direction they went um, because there's a, there's a lot of ways you can go past the original trilogy. And there's a lot of ways you can end a trilogy that takes place after the original trilogy. Um, and I think the direction they went was really interesting and it was really new which is something that you can definitely appreciate um well you know in terms of some aspects uh because (laughs) and that now i'll begin saying things i don't really like about it and why i put it in dead last is because um there was not a lot when i watched the rise of skywalker most recently uh i guess it was a month or a month or two ago now um there's not a lot that made me want to keep watching the movie um, it was very unfortunate with the timing of Carrie Fisher's death. May she rest in peace. 
um, because although they wanted to keep her in the movie, it really, it, it was sad watching her scenes because it, I don't feel like they fit her in very well. So that already made me like depressed a little bit watching the movie. And then there was a lot of things I didn't understand the first or the second time I watched it. I feel like the narrative was a little bit jumpy. Um, it, you know, it, they, they literally spend like less than five minutes at like 10 different planets in the beginning of the movie. Um, and towards the end of it, I am definitely lost after, you know, this, this is strictly my opinion at this point, by the way. Um, I don't, I'm not going to claim this is factual in any way. Um, but after Kylo Ren gets stabbed and he gets force healed, because I didn't really understand what was going on, I was like, what? Like, <laughs> this, this is bullcrap. How is she doing this? Um, and then I didn't understand the second Wayfinder. I didn't realize there was just multiple of them. And then Palpatine coming back, I feel like um, I was just salty about Snoke being dead. I felt like Snoke would have been a cooler villain in the exact same spot. Um, so uh, something I would have changed, I think something that would have just changed it all for me is just to have had Snoke be there. Maybe he can be like ouch defeated in The Last Jedi and he can come back in the Rise of Skywalker. Something cool like that um, because there was a lot of potential I was wasted just to bring back a character we already know about with very little added lore um, other than uh, I lived. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's totally fair. Yeah, and I've uh, <laughs> I saw your video where the last time you tried, you you didn't finish it. You just turned it oh, off yeah. at some point. Oh man, I yeah, I I was really like, I was like I'm gonna make such a fire TikTok about this, but God, I can't keep watching. Just can't. <laughs> but that's why I. I mean, I love doing these because when you talk to people with wildly different views, you can, like, find new things to, to appreciate about uh, certain films. Sometimes. It's not all, not all the time. It's not required. But we, we have fun with the discussions. Uh, <laughs> Fallon? So, I actually liked The Rise of Skywalker. There are a lot of things that I don't like about it. And there are a lot of things that I think that could have been better. But part of me... Like part of the reason I like it so much is because of uh, Kylo Ren and the Ben Solo redemption. That scene of Ben Solo versus the Knights of Ren is probably one of my favorite scenes like in all of Star Wars. Uh, I do like the Ray kylo Ren dynamic. I feel like they could have handled it a little bit better. Um, I do think that they handled Carrie Fisher as well as they could have with her passing. Um, like, as you said, it was at an unfortunate time and they had to use like old footage and stuff. So I think that they did handle it well. I also like the idea of Leia having been a Jedi and then, you know, stopping because she saw her son. Uh, but things that I didn't like about it, I didn't like Palpatine coming back. I also think that Snoke should have lived. Um, I think that Anakin should have showed up like in Force Ghost form and not because I'm biased towards Hayden Christensen, but uh, I do but, think- But there is a clear bias there. <laughs> there is. <laughs> uh, I do think that he should have been there, you know. Uh, I think that the end of Rey versus Palpatine, I think it would have been cool to see like, like the Jedi show up as physical ghosts and not just like voices. And yeah. That's like a big thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, and you had this ranked as eight on your list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And how about uh, how about you, Geek Theory? Oh man, I'm gonna get roasted hard because if you watch any of my TikToks, this is actually my number three. This is this is one of my one of my favorite Star Wars movies. And, and here's why, because I actually really liked The Emperor Returning. It was something that I actually enjoyed when I uh, read Dark Empire uh, many, many, many years ago. I thought that was a really cool idea, the whole Luke turning to the dark side. Now, we didn't get to see that, but I really appreciated uh, The Emperor Returning. And, but at the same time, I really wish they would have set that up um, in a way that made way more sense than somehow he returned. Because... That was kind of lackluster. Uh, I feel like the whole movie, one of the reasons I really like it is because in a way it kind of reminds me of uh, National Treasure, like a, a treasure hunting kind of movie. You know, they're constantly going from clue to clue, trying to find this thing and get to the end goal. And that might have been 
part of the problem that they had with the movie because now they don't have the time to set anything up mm -hmm. uh, and explain anything like uh, like Tuck said with the you know force heal she just pulls that out of nowhere but we know that she she learned it through the the sacred text so seeing those things on screen I think would have helped a lot but overall uh, I really liked the Emperor returning Ray and and uh, and Ben, so getting Ben's uh, redemption story. Uh, I really liked that Adam Driver was able to convey so much emotion with very little dialogue after the scene he has with uh, Han Solo. So that was really cool. And then uh, C three PO. Honestly, I every time he comes on screen, I I, I either <laughs> laughed or I kind of like cheered. The little fanboy in me was like. He's he's that piece in that whole movie that ties that original trilogy feeling to the film, and 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 maybe that's a bit of a stretch for some people, but I, I really appreciated it. Maybe it's just his voice. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I would have really liked more Finn. I, I feel like now that's not exclusive to that to that specific movie, but just uh, just more Finn. I would have loved to see them explore. Um, what's really going on with his character. Cause I feel like in that whole movie, he just runs around screaming her name and, uh, uh it sucked <laughs> that like that sucked to have, <laughs> I mean, you, you could have, you could have had a sound device literally just yell ring instead of having, having like a paid actor. So I, I felt bad for him. I, I really hope that one day they redeem that, uh, whether that's like another series or, or a movie of his own, because I, I really liked Finn and I felt like out of everything that happens in that movie, they did him the dirtiest. And that was probably the thing that I, li I liked the least because I, they set up so much for him in the first two. So. Yeah, no, I can. But it's my top three. <laughs> <laughs> but, and by the way, you, you doing the liking it to national treasure, just, <laughs> Just makes me have to ask you guys. All right, Nicolas Cage is going to be in Star Wars. Who do you cast him as? <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Some alien. Uh, I don't know if I can handle it. He's going to have to be in an alien mask. <laughs> uh, Fallon, any any thoughts on uh, if we I had? Let's put him in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> or makeup or something. Um. Oh man, it would be cool if they. So in in one of the new High Republic books, there is a uh, ship navigator by the name of Geode. And <laughs> if if Nicolas Cage was Geode, where you don't know if he's sentient at all until the very end, and like if through the Force, it's like he speaks through telepathy with Nicolas Cage's voice. That would just like. Oh. See, and I, I went, I went a completely different direction when I, when I was reading about Geode. I was thinking of like uh, Danny DeVito, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Phil from Hercules. <laughs> uh, I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing Danny DeVito in It's Always Sunny when he's like, "I'm the trash man," and he's like, <laughs> "It's the best." Um, okay, so for me, I also put the, the Rise of Skywalker is my least favorite, um, but I will say it's my least favorite. So I used to actively dislike the film, um, and we recently did that on the podcast, and then afterwards I, I rewatched it, because some of the people, it was their favorite Star Wars film, and then of course, once you see it through someone else's eyes who really appreciates some of these things, it, it'll just, it'll just improve it. Um... Palpatine returning for me is I wasn't the biggest fan of it. However, um, it needed to be something that ties that can, carries the through line. So uh, in my opinion, there was only three options. One would be have it somewhat related to to, to Plagueis. Um, two, Emperor Returns. Or three, we have Kylo Ren as the big bad of the film. But if they were going to go towards a redemption angle, obviously that one, <laughs> that other one wasn't going to work. So uh, I definitely have come to terms with it because obviously he's been the big bad for the first two trilogies. So it did kind of wrap it up. Um, I definitely was not a huge fan of Finn. I made a TikTok on this uh, earlier today. Uh, yeah, of, of Finn and this because they really... They really didn't carry his, bring his character forward. They, they set him up to. 
Uh, and also, it, it feels weird, like, they keep trying to give him new love interests. <laughs> and I think that's, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, the big thing I would have done is I would have given it one less planet to go to. If you had taken one of those planets away, then I think we could have gotten to spend more time with the characters. Uh, I know that they shot way more stuff for the intro to the movie. And I think that's what we needed. Uh, I actually think most of the sequel films didn't set up what's happening in the grand scheme of things. We just jump straight into the action, which is entertaining. But if we could have seen, no, this is a full year with Kylo Ren as... He's running the show. He is the supreme leader and things are falling apart because he's terrible at it. Or, you know, he's obsessed with these certain things and I don't think we should be focused on those. And if you can set up that rift um, from that time period, I think that would that would do a lot. Plus, they shot scenes with uh, Eye of Webbish Bog, which is a uh, I, I always I keep talking about it because it, it's freaky as hell. It's a weird little spider alien on top of a, a big giant baby that lives in a lake. Um, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> so if I could have seen that, uh, well, it would a be nightmare fuel, but um, b I really love it when Star Wars gets weird, and I think we need to we need to keep it weird, and I think that's one of the special the special things of it. Um, all right, next at number nine, we collectively have Attack of the Clones. Uh, this one's starting with uh, with Fallon. So my likes about this movie definitely Obi Wan is like my favorite part of this movie. Uh, the introduction to the clones, the music is definitely there. I love the Battle of Geonosis, and I also do like how we saw Yoda like fight Dooku at the end. My dislikes about this movie are definitely the romance scenes. Uh, it, they make me cringe like a lot and the dialogue is just so cringy. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't like, like I obviously still like this movie and like Across the Stars is one of the best songs from Star Wars. And I do love how the Clone Wars like really added onto this movie, but like in its own, it's like my least favorite prequel. And the dialogue, I just feel like it's so, it's just so memeable and laughable that like, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, him being like, <laughs> everything is. <laughs> I also do like you know, but, yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't even quote it because in my head it, it, I start laughing just thinking about uh, Plus, like, uh, a young Boba Fett thing was cool how they like connected that I thought that was cool but yeah yeah definitely mm -hmm. um, Obi-Wan would be very grumpy if he saw this <laughs> uh, how, how about you Geek? Oh, goodness. Uh, so Attack of the Clones is my lead. Like, it was on the bottom of my list. It was number 11. Um, here's here's a couple of things that I liked about it. Um, Jango Fett. Uh, I like Jango Fett and the introduction of the clones. I actually like the first maybe 15 minutes of the movie. I, I think it's really... Like, out of all of the... Out of all the Star Wars films, I think it's got one of the most exciting intros to the film. Just because it's like... You know, it's Obi-Wan and, and Anakin and they're doing what they do best and there's a little bit of banter and they're hunting down a bounty hunter and there's a funny scene in a bar and it's 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 very good. And then all of a sudden Anakin's not cool anymore and he's a big whiny baby for the rest of the film. And <laughs> and it just it the I get so hung up on two things, and it's Obi-Wan's very obvious fake beard. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the Jesus the, years, you know. Like, if, yeah. like you can tell they spent extra money on CGI because they clearly didn't have enough money in the budget for his beard. Like, <laughs> uh, and then this is the only one that I felt like George tried to make it a romantic movie, like his, his one shot here at a Star Wars romance, and it, and it bombed terribly, in my opinion. Uh, Anakin and Padme frustrate me in in a way that I just feel bad for Padme and I don't really understand why she ever fell for him 
because there's four scenes, literally four scenes of them together between uh, you're creeping me out, like you make me uncomfortable, and <laughs> excessive whining to making out. <laughs> like, there's, what did she, like, in my mind, I'm like, what did she see in him? I mean, she, she was the one that had everything, in my opinion, because she's, you know, she's this strong, very political woman. She's had a very successful career. Here comes this 19 year old Anakin who's like, I've been, I've been dreaming about you since I was nine years old, man. I can't think, <laughs> I can't, I can't imagine how many like friendships or relationships I would see fail in my life if I led with that. Like, <laughs> anyways, I, I just, I spend so much time just shaking my head at it that I I can't enjoy what's happening because I just get so hung up on what what is happening here. I mean, he even gaslights her in front of everybody when they're trying to make a, a, a very political decision that she clearly knows much more about, and uh, and she has to basically smack him on the mouth for it. And and I'm still I like, love, but but I you love, love that him, scene. <laughs> like. But you like him? Like, she's willing to put up with everything. And, and and I just don't understand why. So it's it's incredibly frustrating for me. Uh, the, the Clone Wars TV series, I haven't finished all of it, but it definitely does redeem Anakin and Padme's uh, relationship in a lot of ways for me. Um, but no, I, I never turn that movie on for fun. I, unless I'm going to, like, rip it apart with people around me. <laughs> that's the movie that i watch if i'm like doing my homework and i want something on in the background like that's what i'll put on <laughs> so it doesn't fully distract you yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh and yeah how, how about you tucker uh yeah i i've been on both sides of the coin for attack of the clones um the last time i was actually on a podcast um with uh comic comedians um i said it was my least favorite um, it used to be on the bottom of my list and now it's more towards the middle um, because I don't know what happened. I don't know what day I was having last time I watched it, but everything was hitting me just right. Last time I watched it, I was like, this movie rocks. Um, but there is a lot that makes me laugh that, it, that really shouldn't make me laugh. Um, like, like, yeah, like ex exactly what you said. Like he comes in, he's like, I've been dreaming of you since I was And the <laughs> fact that the fact that he speaks, he speaks like this, the whole movie, Obi-Wan and like that, <laughs> like, it makes him so uncool um, when he's supposed to be the coolest dude ever. And that's supposed to be why Padme likes him, because he's like a cool bad boy. I saw that recently, like some George Lucas figure, whatever, said that that's why she liked him. is because he's a bad boy. Um, but I don't know. Last time I watched it, I was like, you know, they're a little. I mean, Anakin's a little kid. I mean, not really. He acts like a little kid. Um, so it kind of makes sense that they're doing, you know, I'm cringing at their love scenes, but. At the same time, they were, I'm not really wanting to cringe when I load up a Star Wars movie. Um, a couple things that annoy me with the film would be, yeah, first of all, Obi-Wan and, like, Anakin, and, and, and he talks like this the whole time. Padme, R2, and stuff like that. Um, and I think that there's a lot in the movie that could just not be there. Like, I saw a YouTube video recently that brought up that instead of going to, like, Dexter's Diner, or Dex, I don't remember what his name was. Um, Dexter Jetster. Uh, yeah, Dexter Jetster. Um, Freaking Zam Wessel could have just been like, the Camino system, blah, and then died, and it would have cut out like 10 minutes of, you know, not essential plot. Um, the, the one thing I really like about the movie when I when I think about it a lot is that it's really an Obi-Wan mystery movie, um, which is really cool, because if you look at it from that angle, you can forget all of the... I, he want... He, I don't know. I don't even remember what Anakin says in the movie because it's all mumbo jumbo. I thought um, she didn't like me watching her line. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> she covered the cameras. She didn't like me watching her. Get out. <laughs> Go. <laughs> when when uh, the one scene that I really like from the movie, my favorite scene is um, when Anakin goes back for Shmi. Yeah. Um, that is the one part of the movie that I will always enjoy because he is like. The chosen one, unbridled, no restriction. He's messing up whoever he sees next. And then he comes back, and you can say Padme, like, pooping her pants because this dude that she's been entertaining is suddenly, you know, the worst guy she's ever met, ever. 
and then you feel bad for Padme. Um, I just wish that the rest of it had made sense up to that point in terms of their relationship. Because um, if it did, that would have hit twice as hard. Um, but, you know, Battle of Geonosis, the clones, 200,000 more with a million well more on the way. That stuff was super cool. The rest of it I have no problem with other than it drags a little bit. But Anakin could have been done a little better and so could have Padme. Okay. Okay. That's that's totally fair. I mean, by the way, those those scenes, though, that were shot in Italy are just gorgeous. Like... Mm-hmm. Those are those are just spectacular. Um, totally agree. There is a lot of odd uh, dialogue choices. Uh, we'll we'll say, but um, yeah, like you were saying, the the Obi Wan mystery factor of it, I love it so much because, like I said, I I feel like Star Wars excels when it gets weird, and watching this is the first time we've seen like what a Jedi mission looks like, and. Obi-Wan has no idea what's happening at any point in the entire movie, and he's just, like, faking it till he makes it. Um, I I talk about it a lot, but I, I love him walking through um, through um, uh, the clone planet. <laughs> Camino. Yeah, Camino. I don't know why I skipped my brain. But I love watching him walk through Camino acting like he has some sort of idea and they're like yeah we're ready uh we have them ready and it's like oh you do that's good news uh can you show it to me and they're like yeah yeah that's a odd phrase but sure um when do you want these yeah i don't uh who's the the template and then he has that weird conversation with Django. where like, once again neither of them know what's happening <laughs> I don't know. It just it really makes me happy. Um, Dexter Jetster, I need a comic or something about that dude. He takes one look at this dart and he's like, "Oh yeah, this is a toxic dart. It's used by assassins, uh, but it's usually made by the Camino cloners, and uh, they're out past the the outer rim." And you're like, "Why do you work at this diner?" Yeah, <laughs> definitely be better served elsewhere. But go ahead, flip no. it further. <laughs> you you know that he's in the witness protection like program on Coruscant because he's, he's seen the some White. stuff. Like <laughs> has to, ha- has to be the case. Uh, the assassination plot was really weird um, and and contrived. So I I don't understand that plot. But no, there was a lot of really great things. I, I gotta say, even though I wasn't the biggest fan of their romance, uh, the scene where they ride out into the Coliseum and they kiss as they're go passing through that entryway and then you get hit with the full-on um, across the stars, like, musical motif is just a beautiful scene. Um, when the clones are walking through the dust of Geonosis and you just see all the particle from these these blasters like going back and forth as it's illuminating them that was the coolest thing that was like i lived for that scene when i was younger because that's never been possible before because that was the first time we got to see that much cg all in one scene and that's why i love playing that level on battlefront but um oh overall it's it's still one of my weaker movies because i used to love it until recently that i realized that i keep falling asleep when i put it on so it just it doesn't bode well. <laughs> it doesn't bode well yeah. all right at number uh, eight we have the force awakens um and i started with valance so uh geek theory yeah wh- where did you rate it and your thoughts the force awakens i put at uh, number six on my list um, I, I really enjoyed the film. I remember seeing it in theaters. Uh, I felt really bad because uh, me and a friend of mine went with my folks. And I remember in the lineup, we were making predictions about the film. And I had said, uh, I, I bet you Han Solo dies. And voila, <laughs> you guys know the rest. But yeah, um, I, I, honestly, I think it gets a bad rap just for being so, like it mirrors so much of A New Hope. But... I really liked the character building that came from that film. So it was a really good introduction to Ray. We get this, you know, we get this scavenger character who, and, and we see what her day to day looks like. It's not, uh, she's not this, you know, crazy ritualistic person other than the fact that she finds what she needs to sell to buy food and then she eats and goes to sleep and then you rinse and repeat and hopefully you don't die. Um, I thought they did a really great job bringing in the characters in the universe that we already know and love. So 
the the introduction to Han Solo and Chewbacca, I remember I I almost like cried because I was like, oh man, it's it's Chewie, <laughs> and uh, it it was just. I don't know. I think I think they did so many things right with that film. The the humor was was bang on. You know, I I don't think uh, the the comedy in Star Wars should be very overreaching. I think it should be very subtle and just kind of inserted, uh, just in the like basic dialogue. Um, they did a good job with that. I loved seeing Finn's story uh, when he meets Poe and. I mean, you can you can tell right off the hop that they're gonna you know they have a friendship that's meant to last, and I think that was really cool. Um, there's not a lot that I don't like about the film. I think I would have liked to see, like, if I could change some stuff, I probably would have taken out some of Kylo Ren uh, Kylo Ren's uh, tantrums. Um, although at the same time, it shows just how like unstable he is. I just didn't find it convincing as a like a big bad guy like. I didn't feel like he was the big bad guy. I mean, obviously we have Snoke in that film, but I just didn't see him as a threat because, you know, I'm sitting in the theater with my children and they throw similar tantrums to what Kylo Ren is doing. And I just can't take it seriously, you know, <laughs> and neither can the stormtroopers. <laughs> so, uh, I would have, I would have changed that. Just made him a little bit more intimidating, especially considering when we first see him, he's he's scary. You know, he he holds that like that bolt right in the middle of nowhere. You never seen that before. You get that cool shot. I remember, I thought that was like the coolest thing. Never seen it before. Um, I I don't know. I just I feel like they could have made him a little bit more intimidating. I didn't feel like he was very scary. Uh, overall, though, I enjoyed the film. I, I put it on from time to time. Uh, my kids loved it. Not a lot, not a lot bad to say about it, honestly. Okay, nice. Uh, how about you, Tucker? Um, you know, when I think of the Force Awakens and my experiences watching it, which I will say right now, I've only seen the sequel trilogy in total two times because I don't enjoy it very much. Um, but when I think of The Force Awakens, I remember how much I enjoyed it in the theaters and I don't enjoy it much anymore with the knowledge of the other two films because there was a lot that I think could have worked in The Force Awakens if they were carried over into the other films. Like, um, for example, um, there was something that just makes me upset now when, I, when Maz Kanata has um, Luke's lightsaber and she's like, that's a story for another time. And then you never hear it, but it is established outside of the movies. But I was like, man, like, shucks. Like, I want to know about that. Um, <laughs> and there's a couple of things in the movie as well that rubbed me the wrong way. That I feel I feel like there were a lot of missed moments and a lot of things that were too convenient. Um, when when the Millennium Falcon is right there for Rain Fenn, I'm like, okay, sure. Like, you know, that's like the Eppenhawk and Knights of the Old Republic. It'd be unfair for me to say that's cheesy because, you know, that happens all the time. That's how Star Wars works. Um, they get in the Millennium Falcon. I, I don't at the first time I watched it, I was like, eh, I mean, sure. Ray, Ray can barely fly the thing. Um, and then she leaves and immediately, like minutes later, they're talking to Han Solo and Chewbacca. And I'm like, okay, I know how that's like the luck. Luck doesn't exist. The force exists, but man, the force has a funny sense of humor. Cause that was fast. <laughs> like, that, What are the odds? Right. Um, that's what I think of. And then, um, shoot, what was I about to say? Um, going through the film, uh, uh, oh yeah, whenever um, the First Order, we see them destroy a whole bunch of worlds at the same time, something the Empire didn't ever really do. They destroyed one world, or a, a, one or two off screen, I don't exactly remember at this point. Um, we see a reaction from the people on the planet, obviously, as their impending doom comes towards them. Everybody else doesn't care. I would have thought Han Solo, knowing what have happened, because Han Solo has connections. Like, he knows a lot of people that would have been on those planets, and he's like, you coming, Ray? And, like, stuff like that. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, like, why don't they care? That was so many people. Like, even Leia, I mean, although Andra Alderaan was her home world, she was like, no! Um, and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, see the, I see The Force Awakens as a lot of Missed moments, things that went a little too far, things that were a little cheesy. I can definitely understand why people would enjoy it. I don't think it was wrong for mirroring A New Hope when it does. Um, but I, I think it is my second to least favorite of the sequels, with The Last Jedi being my favorite, because a lot of things weren't really matched in the other movies. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, that's that's definitely fair. I mean, I uh, yeah, there's there's def there's there's a lot of camp in that film. It's uh, I think it's probably the most campy of the sequel. But uh, your thoughts on it, Fallon? You also ranked it at number ten. Yeah. I, yeah. So this movie does like have a special place in my heart because it was the first Star Wars movie that I've ever seen in theaters. The first Star Wars movie that I ever got to experience the build up for. Like when they had announced it, I think I was probably in sixth or seventh grade and I was a freshman in high school when it had come out. So by that point, I was old enough to really have expectations and all that stuff. And I don't know, I was like, I do like it, but I never rewatch it. I was disappointed with it because I thought it was really similar to A New Hope. But things that I liked about it were definitely the setup for the characters Kylo Ren. I love how Han's character, how he kind of started off as this cocky guy in the OT, and now here he's acting as like a father figure to Rey. Um, I think that that was super cool to see. Um, I Things I didn't like, I didn't like how Luke, Han, and Leia didn't get their reunion. I don't know. I feel like that would have made me really emotional. Um, I mean... I just like I'm not a big fan of it I don't know why <laughs> like I remember walking out kind of disappointed I feel like because I went in with such high expectations and at the time I was like prequels like everything else is eh the prequels this prequels this and I just felt like they didn't really take enough risks with The Force Awakens I felt like it was too much like A New Hope yeah, yeah, and that's that's it's definitely fair. I mean, I, I've I've heard that comparison a lot. Um, definitely hit all the same story beats. Uh, it's funny if because uh, I read um, Bob Iger's book of uh, you, Right of a Lifetime, and he talks about that decision where he kind of forced <laughs> that decision because he was he wanted to try and like. Uh, George Lucas's goal was to inspire the next generation of kids and Bob Iger when purchasing Star Wars decided we need to do something that will get the original trilogy fans on board and so that's why he kind of pushed that decision into it uh, and I honestly do think that it hurt um, it hurt everything now that being said <clears throat> I, I like this movie a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, there's definitely similarities that, that hit the same story beats uh, as A New Hope. Absolutely. And it was intentional to show us how different each of these characters are from the archetypes that were set up in A New Hope. And so that's what I enjoyed, like watching Rey be the exact opposite person as Luke. Um, I, I love her opening scenes, like, first of all, sliding down that whole sand dune just looks amazing, super fun. Um, also, can we talk about her theme? Her theme is so beautiful. I, oh. I, I love it. Oh, without a doubt. Um, but like these little subtle scenes, like as she's cleaning the little part and she looks up and sees the old lady and that's like indicative of where she will be if she doesn't leave this world and start her life and all this stuff. I, I'm, I'm a sucker for them, for those little tiny scenes. Um, personally, uh, I, I have it as uh, I put this movie in the middle because it doesn't do anything offensive to for me, but it doesn't do anything especially right. Um, in my opinion, and uh, again, I think this is, it's a victim of Star Wars's success, right? Because you see Kylo Ren and you're expecting like another badass like Vader, but the whole point <laughs> is that he's not a badass like Vader and he's never going to be, uh, he has too much of his father's heart and he's going to try everything he can to like prove himself. Yeah, I can do this, but he can't. And like that's the whole point, but it if you come in expecting, no, I want this all powerful Sith Lord, then yeah, it's it's gonna disappoint you. Also, I know there's a lot of people that you know Adam Driver is, is a very handsome man and, and all this stuff, but I gotta say when he took off the mask for the first time, he looked like a wet dog to me. He looked <laughs> like <laughs> uh, uh, it was just it was just weird. I was like, ugh. Huh. Like. <laughs> 
Like, I feel like that definitely was most of the people. Like, that's how my mom reacted. Okay. <laughs> well, why, why the long face, buddy? Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, other than that, I, it was it was a great setup. Um, another way I think it's a victim of its own success is we've had so much Star Wars content via books and movies and all these things where there's so much that we have explained now that was never the case. That was never in the movies. Original trilogy, Palpatine didn't have a first or a last name. Palpatine was never mentioned in the original trilogy. You you could find out his last name in the novelization or in the credits of Return of the Jedi. And he didn't have a first name until 2014. It took Disney buying Star Wars to give the man a first name. Uh, so now, like you see all these little things and you're like, I want to know about that or, Mm -hmm. or that. Like, I know a lot of people were mad that we didn't get more Knights of Ren in the next movie, but there were one line and you see them for like 1.5 seconds. You know, they weren't actually hinted to come, but we just wanted it. Like, but I still want to see them, you know? Um, so I, I don't know. That's, that's why I have mixed feelings about it. Now I will say I did rank this, above one above a new hope um and that's just because yeah it does a lot of the things that a new hope does but i feel like in a lot of ways it does some a little better in the fact of giving the the characters more story now of course that's a victim of a movie coming out in 1977 um but a new hope was a lot more plot driven where we didn't find out anything about any of the characters throughout that film so that's kind of where, where I, I sit on it. But um, mm-hmm. uh, so our next one was The Last Jedi. And who did I start with? Um, I start with you, Geek Theory. So, Tucker, I'm going uh, to you first. The Last right. Jedi. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. I started sorry. With, I started, I started, I started with you last time. So <laughs> my, my bad. bad. Uh, <laughs> Tucker. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> so The Last Jedi is a very strange for me to consider in its entirety because the first time I saw it, I really didn't like it, but I left the theater like, that was good, right, Dad? Wasn't that a good movie? Because I wanted it to be. Um, and I really didn't like it the first time, and I didn't know why. Um, but the more I thought about it, the less I wanted to see it again, and that was for a couple reasons. And there are reasons I can appreciate now. Um, the, the things I do like about the movie is that all in all, it's a pretty good movie. It's like, it's definitely a movie that anybody could have came and seen, and they would have been fine with it, and they would have enjoyed it. It was a pretty good movie. It was made by people who know how to make good movies. Um, but the, there, there was a lot of things that I would just completely not have in the script. A lot of things that I feel like were just completely wrong. Um, I, I won't get into it too much right here, but for me, Luke, I don't. The, the important thing to remember, first of all, is that. It's all fiction. There is no correct measurement of character growth in fiction. Um, In my opinion, Luke Skywalker, I didn't think he was portrayed very well. Um, I can appreciate the whole protagonist goes dark kind of storyline, but I didn't really like it too much from Star Wars. I think because, you know, I am a Luke Skywalker simp. I do want to see him, like, saving the day. I didn't think it made a whole lot of sense that all the, like, everything blew up in his face and he was like, instead of helping my sister Leia, who I have a very close connection with, I'm going to go sit on a rock across the galaxy. (laughs) Um, That's something I didn't enjoy too much personally, but I can, I can understand why people would like it. Um, I, I I will never get over the fact that the resistance was burning fuel in space. And the whole story was we're running out of fuel. You guys need to go and stop the first order so that we can get somewhere safe before we run out of fuel. But they were in space, so they could shut off the engines and still move at the same speed um, because there's no friction in space. And I don't know if there's something I'm missing that makes that not possible in Star Wars, but I'm pretty sure that that could have been the case. I also think the Leia scene in space was portrayed awfully because it does make sense that if you force pull something, you should go towards it because you're in space again. Um, However, I think she was way too far away from the ship. Because she, this is literally what she did on screen. What she could have done is, like, right as she gets sucked out, maybe, like, her eye opens and she, like, pulls herself back towards it with, like, a, a tremendous effort and the screen trembling. What actually happened is, boom, like Superman, right? 
Um, and that does not hit me right. That that betrays everything I thought I knew about Star Wars. But it does make sense in general. I just didn't think it was portrayed well on screen. Um, I, 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 I didn't understand this the first few times, was the whole hyperspace tracking thing. Because there are... They're in there were other parts in Star Wars where they were like, what? They like they're here too. But what they do is they they used to calculate it on computers where they possibly could have been, and they kind of hope they're right, or they they try to chase them through hyperspace. And that's also why sometimes they're like, Oh, we lost them. We didn't get the calculations done because they're already gone. But I was like, if Finn knows where their machine is to track people through hyperspace, why was he surprised that they could track them through hyperspace? Because they get on the ship, and he's like, yeah, I was a janitor here. I know where the, the thing is. We'll go get it. And I was like, then why are you surprised? Um, and it, basically what it comes down to, it's a lot of nitpicky things. One thing I really did enjoy about The Last Giant, and it's a reason I would watch it again, is the portrayal of the Force and Rey's awakening to it. When Rey's being trained by Luke, and he's like, imagine like the life on the rock, like the grass, whatever he says. It's like, oh! This is just like Knights of the Old Republic 2, and I love that game. So I loved it there, too. Um, and Ray, although I will say, Ray in the cave where she was looking at herself, and like it was all the mirror and stuff, I was like, that made no sense. I didn't think <laughs> that accomplished very much. I don't think she, she came out of it, and she was like, all right. And I don't know why it was there. It looked cool. Um, but I will. I would be lying if I said it wasn't an enjoyable movie. It is a fun watch. It's not at all what I expect or want from Star Wars, but it was good. It was not bad. All right. I, I love it. Um, so one thing I, I will say, though, only, and it's only because you asked. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're right. If you were to turn your engines off, you would go at the same speed eternally. But that's that's the point, is both ships are accelerating regularly. Because this one has less mass, it's able to accelerate slightly faster than that one. So if they turn off the engine, then they would be caught up with. But it's I don't know why in my head it was they were both kind of going at their maximum velocity already. Um, I think I just missed that when I watched it. So thank you for clarifying. No, no, to- totally makes <laughs> makes sense. Um, uh, yeah, your thoughts on it, uh, Fallon? To go off what Tucker said. Um... So The Last Jedi definitely brought something else different to Star Wars. Like, it wasn't really something like we had ever seen before. At first, I used to really not like this movie. And honestly, over the past few months, it's really, really grown on me. Pretty much because of you, Chaco, and, like, all of your videos and stuff. And I've been, like, like looking at it differently. But, like, there's so much that I love from this movie. From Rey and Kylo's new Force connections. From Rey discovering her power through the Force. So Luke, how Luke was portrayed in this movie, I have mixed feelings about because Luke is also my favorite and I love like the way he was in the original trilogy. But from to a certain extent, I understand the way, like like the direction that they were trying to go for, like kind of like an Obi-Wan hermited type, like, oh, my like apprentice turned, it's my fault, that kind of thing. So there I understand. Kylo, not firing on the ship that Leia was on just showed how conflicted he was and how haunted he was after he killed his father. And I think that that's super important. Uh, I loved Snoke's throne room and that um, between Kylo and Rey, I loved that fight. And things I didn't like, I didn't like the way that they killed off Snoke. I thought that he should have been the villain for the um, ninth movie. We also they also said that we were going to find out who Snoke was and we kind of just like didn't I feel like like they were just like oh Snoke and then Kylo Ren kills him like okay (laughs) Snoke falls that's it um also something that I did like Poe in this movie I I really liked show he started to show a lot of leadership um I didn't like Canto Bite in this movie I thought that it was kind of unnecessary uh finn and rose i feel like that was kind of when finn's character had started to go downhill i didn't really like rose's character i think that finn honestly to make his character better i think maybe he should have sacrificed himself at the end on crate instead of rose coming in and just like taking him out and that kiss was like so so awkward (laughs) yeah that was that was cringy (laughs) and i also 
something that I loved was the whole Luke versus Kylo Ren thing and Luke from somewhere else. Like Luke's death did make me sad, but I think that they handled it in like a really respectful way with him looking at the sunset and like Luke and Leia, the kiss between like him kissing her head and like the dice and stuff. I think that this movie is definitely like underrated. And I think that a lot of people give it too much hate because I think that it actually provided so much more than people are giving it credit for. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I agree. Uh, your thoughts on a Geek Theory? Okie dokie. Uh, this one is, uh, I, I ranked it 10th on my list. Um, and uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where to start. Um, how, do, how do I explain this? Um, it frustrates me. This I remember this movie frustrate. The best way I can describe it is it, it frustrates me the same way that the rise of Skywalker frustrated me regarding Finn. Uh, the Force Awakens does so much to set up all these things. You have all these questions. You walk out of the theater and you're like, "Who is Rey? And how did Maz get the lightsaber? And what's going to happen next?" And then you come to this movie and literally it gets tossed off a rock, and you you're just you're left with just more questions and no answers by the time you leave the theater. And I remember at, at the beginning when I, when I saw it in theaters, I remember I was, I was mostly mad that I felt like I could take the Seinfeld laugh track and play it to the whole film. And I didn't feel like that's something that star Wars should have. Like, obviously I said earlier, comedy makes a lot of sense in the star Wars world, but it's usually subtle the, the one of the opening scenes has uh, like a, a prank call dialogue and all i could think of was bart simpson and so it just really pulled me out of the the universe i just had a hard time dealing with a lot of the jokes because it just felt like one after the other after the other um now that i revisit it and i've watched it a couple times i can i, I think i've one of the things i love the most is luke's portrayal a lot I, I struggled with it a lot when i first saw it but now that i think about it i can really cling it all to his quote where he says you think what i'm gonna walk out with a laser sword and face the whole first order you know and that's what we expected him to do like you walked out of the force awakens and you're like oh you just wait when luke shows up y'all are gonna have a nightmare because my boy's gonna be swinging and it's gonna be crazy and then you don't get that at all um, which is really a good thing. I wish they would have given us a little bit more less crazy hermit dude and more broken man who believed his own hype for so long that when he failed, he realized like just what human error feels like. Cause we've all been there where you just are like, as a father, you know, you're, I, I'm supposed to do all these great things for my children. And if I make a mistake and it leads to something incredibly bad, yeah, you're going to, you're going to feel that. And you, you're not going to want to be around everyone. And you're not, you're, you're going to really kind of cave into yourself and just be in those feelings. And so it, I think once you see that Luke in that light, just as a, a broken man, um, it, it made a lot of sense because he wasn't, he wasn't the guy, he wasn't the, he wasn't the hero that we expected him to be and nor should he have been. I mean, that just shows you how much pressure we all put on him just as viewers. Um, when we, when we watch these movies, you know, we were expecting great things and he, he, he wasn't in a place to do those things. Um, a couple things I, I would have changed it's very specifically, very small details. I would have taken out a lot of the jokes and made it a little bit more easygoing. But specifically, the Canto bite scenes, I would have liked them a lot more, I think, if uh, outside they were racing. I can't remember what the creatures were called. Um, Five years. Okay. It should have been pod racing, 100%. Should have been pod racing. That would have been a great way to like tie it back to the prequels. I think... If you wanted to call it fan service, whatever, I think it would have been a really cool nod in one of those things where you're like, oh, that's so cool. Pod racing is still a thing. Awesome. And uh, so just seeing that rather than the, the creatures themselves. But yeah, um, things I liked about it. Yeah, now I like Luke's portrayal. 
I love the throne room scene, everything about it, the slow motion, all the shots. It's very beautiful. It's nice to look at. Sometimes I just watch that on its own. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think that's that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I add something? Yeah, go something yeah. Something that like nobody has mentioned yet. I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this way, but like in The Force Awakens, Hux was like this big bad, like intimidating dude, and then he just gets worse and worse and worse. And then I feel like it would have been so cool for his character in Rise of Skywalker if he were to like leave with Finn and Poe. Like I feel yeah. like like they could have just done a lot more with him and he could have been a really, really cool character, but instead he was just like kind of there after the force awakens i felt like like you said like the prank call thing i thought that was so like but yeah i just felt like hux could have been portrayed a lot better see and i, I agree uh, yeah i agree 100 percent. i always i liked the hux uh kylo ren rivalry the back and forth in the force awakens and it gives you that perception like hux stands before snoke and with confidence and you're just like this guy he he's the bad guy to watch for like let's not sleep on this guy and then he just becomes this like second rate character who's just there for like comedic relief he's the butt end of a lot of jokes and but i also feel like in this movie they do that with with a lot of like all almost all the villains they kind of just do them dirty you know like nobody is really overly that intimidating um yeah, Snoke has his moment with with Ray where he's got full control of her, but then they just off him within like half a minute, anyways. So yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what happens to Hux too. In The Force Awakens, he's this like damper on Kylo Ren. He's the overboss. He's like he's keeping him in check, and then his whole character turns into I'm the spy. Shoot me, and then he dies in the next scene. I'm like, yeah. is that really everything you were set up to do? <laughs> I thought that when Kylo Ren was like unconscious in the throne room after like Ray had left and Hux was like standing over him, I thought Hux was going to try and kill him or something or try yeah. to do I mean, he but he grabbed his gun and he he started to give up. He's like, "All right, I never mean, mind." Yeah, but I thought like <laughs> it was going to be like more and it was going to be like a bigger thing between them, but after like it was like nothing happened, you know? Like the whole like rivalry thing, I feel like where was that there? You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's that's that's, that's interesting. Uh, like the way I kind of saw them as um, is that Hux is like the first order legacy guy, right? And he was running all of this whole show, and then this this guy Kylo Ren shows up. He's not part of our military. Who is he? What is he doing? Now he like outranks us, and he's like starts to surpass everyone. Uh, I, I just kind of saw Hux as getting more and more, like, um, just unraveling as he is getting usurped for what he thinks is, like, his right. That's just, that's kind of how, how I saw it, you know? I, I can see that. I mean, rightfully so. I would be pretty pissed off, too, if I were him. Some kid in a mask who smashes stuff comes in here and all of a sudden he's dead. <laughs> but, and, and it's mean, funny to me, because that's the same exact thing that happened with, with Vader, especially if, like... Yeah. In the 2017 comic run, where people are like, who is this guy? Like, why is he commanding us to do stuff? I don't yeah. know who he is. He's not part of our. He doesn't have a military rank. Like, we all went to school for this, uh, and he's just I, murdering us. Like, damn it! <laughs> I was gonna say, I think, I think two really good observations just from this discussion is that, uh, in a lot of ways, Kylo Ren wants to be like Vader, but indirectly acts a lot like Anakin. Uh, yeah. <laughs> especially with the tantrums, but is it not fair to say that flirting too? The flirting attempt. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, no, you're you're sure nothing, <laughs> but not to <laughs> me though. Huh? Hey, hey. Um, the uh, but yeah, and then like we talk, we're talking about Hux here, and all I can think about is how like awesome Agent Callus's story is. Yeah, because it's basically the same story, just with a way better ending. <laughs> yeah. With a lot more time on yes, the Yes, absolutely. As well. Yeah. No, uh, so I so the last Jedi actually for me it crawled up the ranks. So for the longest time my top well, I, I don't even want to eh, whatever. My my top 3 were uh it was it was it was Empire, then Return, and then uh Revenge. And then the last Jedi 
just kept crawling and crawling on subsequent watches and it's it's now my favorite uh, my very last watch it's become my favorite Star Wars film because um, again I like I'm a huge lore heavy guy and um, and character guy and I honestly believe that this does the most with people's characters of any Star Wars film uh, in the whole franchise like h- how do you give Ray, Finn, Poe, Kylo Ren, and Luke a full arc in the movie without making Luke the main character, without, you know, and so, yes, some people's stories were suppressed, but all of them, whatever their goal was, and I would like to be a writer, like, I, I write, but I've never had anything published. Um, and so I usually look at things through that lens, and the they put obstacles between each character and what they want the most. Mm-hmm. And we get to see how that resolves. <clears throat> and so I, you know, I really appreciated that about the film. Um, also all the scenes with Luke, like I, I am also a huge Luke Stan and the way that it touches on all of Luke's training scenes in this film I believe are, are beautiful because a lot of the stuff that he says it and a lot of <laughs> it's funny because a lot of the criticism mimics the stuff that he says because we grew up being the little kid at the very end playing with your toys and you're like Luke Skywalker and he's like stares down everyone and all this stuff um, that stuff isn't easy to do and also when you are in a situation where you are the only person you can turn to and you try your absolute hardest and you do everything right and you still fail that's that sucks <laughs> you know what i mean and uh and, and for me this season of the mandalorian actually really hammered that in you know he's this badass he comes in he saves them he picks up grogu uh, he doesn't ask if they're okay or if they need <laughs> <He's> yeah. like, <laughs> I'm here for that guy all right see you guys um no no but uh watching him take Krogu and look at Din and say I will protect this kid with my life imagine something happens to that kid yeah that that hurts you know what I mean like that's not something you, you shrug off uh the next day you know so I, you know, I really appreciated that uh, the throne room scene is beautiful, and unlike any other fight scene that that we have in Star Wars. Yes, there was there was some uh, choreography errors and things like that, but um, the way the camera the camera work, like watch it and look at the camera work of a crazy action scene, and then it focuses on the the actor's face in the scene, zooms out to the action pans over and Ray's in the middle of an action scene and it zooms in on her face and she's still acting and like I don't know that's I've never seen that before in anything uh, so there's just a, a lot of stuff you know the, the lore this is the only one that touched on on the prequels really you know I watch the prequels and I'm like I, I'm irritated I mean there, so there is a hill I will die on <laughs> which is um, Anakin falling is not the Jedi's fault. I mean, yes, they took some, they, they could have prevented it, but A, it was his decision, his choices, and B, there was a literal Sith Lord pushing him towards the dark since he was nine years old, you know? Um, y- you can't be like, <laughs> you can't be like, oh, but the Jedi were off base and serving the Republic when a Sith Lord is leading the Republic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's the hill I'll die on. However, Luke talks about that and he's like, you know, he acknowledges that they failed in their charge of taking care of things. Doesn't matter how well the, they tried to do, doesn't matter how much stuff they did right, the end result was their failure. I took all of that information and I tried my hardest and I ended up with the same failure. Maybe the Jedi are the problem. And I don't know, that that kind of hit me. Um, but 
you know, there was there's still a lot of stuff that I would change about the movie. Uh, again, there are f- a few bits of humor that I thought needed to be toned down a little bit. Um, the beginning with BB-8 shoving his face into a plug of electricity. I don't even know what the hell was happening there. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was confusing. Um, when BB-8 started controlling the walker, uh, that, that part made me mad. Like, I physically got mad seeing it until i saw finn's reaction and finn had the same look on his face that i had on mine of like the hell (laughs) i was like okay okay i guess i I get that (laughs) no there's there's definitely stuff that i I would i would change or that could be portrayed well but uh, again i still feel star wars is at its best when it's when it's being weird and like ray in the cave and you're like i don't i don't know what's going on but i like it (laughs) um also Sound design, I think, is the best of any. I like sound design and cinematography. I honestly feel this is the best Star Wars movie because there is not a single scene that you couldn't take a snapshot and have that be your desktop background, you know. And then the sound design, especially when, um, when Ray and Kylo Ren would talk, and like you feel the sound and all the air gets sucked out of the room, and it's just them, like. That was beautiful. Plus, I love Knights of the Old Republic, and so, like, you're like, these guys have these weird connections, just like Revan and Basla have this weird connection. You're trying to figure out, like, what's going on. I don't know. That type of stuff is, is cool to me. So, that's, that's spoilers, why... Spoilers, by like, the way. <laughs> I mean, tw- 20-year-old spoilers. Yeah. I'm not, yeah, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, moving on, we have uh, Rogue One. And uh, we'll go to Fallon first. So Rogue One is like such a beautifully shot movie. Like one of the first things I noticed was that the cinematography was freaking insane. Like Scarif, it's beautiful. Uh, I will admit the first time I watched Rogue One, I fell asleep. (laughs) Um, It could have been because it was 1130 post basketball game. But I just do feel like the beginning is a little slow. I'm not going to lie. It is slow. But I think it explains a lot. K2SO, I think, brings... He's one of the best parts of this movie to me. He brings, like, a humor to a a dark ending movie. And I think that's great. He's one of my favorite droids. Vader, his end scene, I love it. It's perfect. Uh, Jin and Cassian, I think that his show could be really, really interesting, and it could add a lot of depth to this movie, which I think will make me like it a lot more. Um, I did, I personally did like the little cameos from Bail Organa, Mon Mothma, Tarkin, and CGI Leia. They all made me super excited. I remember, uh, so I went with my best friend who likes Star Wars, but isn't, like, as into it as I am, and Tarkin CGI came on, I was like, that's, that's Tarkin, like, they CGI'd him, like, that's so cool, so, yeah, I think it was pretty cool how it connected into A New Hope perfectly, and they did it so well, so long after, I thought that that was just awesome, but, yeah, nice. things I didn't like was just probably, kind of how slow it was in the beginning and i think i only say that because i fell asleep one time (laughs) oh i I love it uh your thoughts on it geek theory uh yeah just to kind of like add to what fallon's saying it's it it ties perfectly into a new hope um i can't actually even watch a new hope without watching rogue one first i have to watch them as just one big film um because that's to me how good it was it's i put it uh as fifth so it's almost in the middle uh, on my list, but, um, but no, I like a lot of the same things. I love, I love K2SO super hilarious. Uh, also I think Jin Urso was just such a badass. And, um, the, the whole movie though, at the end of the day, if I was to sum it up, it just, it was the first, this movie made me realize that I don't need lightsabers to enjoy star Wars period. Like, if the Darth Vader scene never happened the way it does, I would not have been sad about it, period. Like, I wasn't expecting it. Um, Yeah. 
Like there's so much more than the Skywalkers and the yeah. Explorer. And and so I I really like from like from the beginning to the end, I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, it was a little slow in in in, uh, in parts, but mostly it was just it was really it was really cool to explore what else was going on in the world or in the universe um, while this war is taking place where Jedi and Sith are not concerned. Um, I remember my mind was blown when I saw Tarkin on screen because, uh, I mean, how that was the first thing that, that came to mind. I was sitting, how, how is this even happening right now? And um, and then the, the Leia scene as well, uh, that was it, it's like two it's what like half a minute it's not even very long that she has screen time but it's enough to just incite this like very nostalgic feeling that you just you walk away you're like oh i really love i love star wars yeah. and uh but no all, overall i love the movie i think the thing that i don't like about it is that my my brain as someone who's very analytical says to me it's a shame we don't technically need it you know like the, we didn't need the movie. Um, the story's great. It, they do a great job clearing up any questions. Um, as a kid, I wondered a lot, like how the rebellion was born and um, how they got to where they were when we see them in the original trilogy. But did I need to see it? Not necessarily. And I, I think that's what sucks is because I was like, ah, oh, just didn't really need to be a part of anything. We didn't need this movie. Um, and I hate that I feel that way because <laughs> I really loved the film. <laughs> yeah. And I just I just watched it the other night and I'm like, oh, this is so good. It's so great. And I love like if you pay close enough attention. I'm a big I'm a big Rebels fan, like love Star Wars Rebels. And so, you know, you, you hear Hera's name get called over the PA and I'm just like, oh, yep. you, oh, yeah, it's you just get great. to see Chopper uh, a little yeah. bit and the ghost. Oh man, it's just it's just cool. It just it just reaffirms like why why I'm a Star Wars fan. I, it's not because of Jedi. It's not because of Sith. It's it's because I just love the universe, and and that's that's what this movie does. It just shows you some like another perspective of what's going on. It's just it's awesome. Yeah, I uh, I, I love that. I have there's a secondary hill that I'm willing to die on, and that's Star Wars is more realistic than Star Trek. The only difference is who the camera follows. If you aren't following a Jedi, it's really grounded and it's very, very realistic. You know what I mean? Like I, I will maintain that the very first episode of Star, of Star Trek Next Generation is far more fantastical than any amount of Star Wars combined. Like you, you meet Q and he's like... Mr. Mitchell Pitalik, like just making things in, and, and uh, you meet a space, a giant space jellyfish that has superpowers, uh, but is messing up because he's sad. Like it's <laughs> the first episode is, is weird as hell. You know what I mean? But <laughs> anyways, that's a hill I'm willing to die on. I'll fight you. Come at me. Uh, Tucker, <laughs> Tucker, your thoughts are Rogue one. I really don't have too much to say about Rogue One. I I put it in the middle of my list specifically because it's not the movie I would recommend someone watch first, nor is it the one that I would watch first if I was looking to enjoy any Star Wars movie. Um, but I will say, um, marathoning it into the original trilogy is like the best way to experience that movie, in my opinion. It's it's a very contained story. Obviously, you know, spoilers for a very old movie now. Uh, everyone dies in the end. That's super cool. <laughs> it's very contained. Um, like it, it's, it, it is very much like realistic and gritty, and it's something that the Mandalorian I wanted to see in the Mandalorian that they didn't really do because even Mandalorian season two became a grow the became about the Force and the Jedi at some point. Um, whereas Rogue One is completely nitty gritty the whole way through. There, you know, blood stains, dirt, like everyone's gross looking, everyone's sweating, everyone's dead. Um, and it, it's it's super cool. It, it would the only thing that could make it rank higher on my list is if there was more to do with these characters but because of the nature of the film like it, it's at a natural disadvantage to the original trilogy or the prequel trilogy because it doesn't have more to do with these characters um and that's really all i got to say about it and that's totally fine i mean so for, for me i'm gonna take the opposite this one was the lowest one on my list um for a long time until until i did the podcast episode on this movie and that it actually moved it up 
several places. Um, and so now I, I definitely, I definitely in, enjoy it for what it is. Um, and again, this is all the, all the new movies have been so beautifully shot. Like it's, it's crazy how much, how ad, far advanced that is. And they're bringing this new technology with still blending in this, this old flavor. Um, I, I love that. And, uh, Chariot, I love Chariot. I mean, uh, Element 7 was bringing up in, in the chat, you know, the scene where he gets bagged and he's like, are you kidding? I'm blind. <laughs> like, yeah. just like, yeah, there's just like a lot of really subtle humor points that, um, that just hit for me, you know, K2SO rescuing her, like you're being rescued. Don't resist. Like certain parts. I just, I just love, um, for me, the things that I, I disliked was it felt like this movie was written backwards. I felt like this the pitch for the movie was the third act and they had to write something to meet the third act. And I think they in some ways kind of... How do I say it? Because we know there was a lot of production issues on this film. Um, and they had to change directors. <laughs> uh, sorry, they didn't change directors on this film. But they there was just a lot of reshoots um, like for a good perspective. Uh, portion of the film and i feel like i know what that is i think the whole film was something that was a deep lore story about kyber crystals and the whole first act like jen gets given a necklace and it's a kyber crystal and then they go to this planet where they're harvesting kyber crystals and when she meets chariot you know that he's sensing her kyber crystal and he says oh the strongest stars have hearts of kyber and, and all and i keep they keep using that as this through line. And then in the second act, it's that's gone. Like they forgot about it. And, and you're like, Oh, okay. All right, cool. Let's, let's, let's keep going. Then. <laughs> and then it becomes, you know, I, I put a flaw in the death star and I was like, wait, wasn't that designed in episode three? Like I could have swore mm-hmm. in episode two, we saw that the full design and we saw them building the superstructure in episode three. So like that, part still messes with my mind uh but it's okay that's that's like my nitpicky brain because i have weird recall of very specific stuff um but you know if there's anything i i would change or the thing that i got to appreciate um because i had sunflower stardust who's an amazing gin cosplayer um and flow ducks on when we did this and the thing i really took from our conversation was um, really that through line of, of hope, you know, Jen was raised by this crazy guy who's this terrorist destroying stuff. Like because of him, she had no hope. She knew things were bad. She knew they were going to get worse and there was no reason to do anything about it because there's no hope. Uh, you meet Cassian and like he is meeting with a fellow rebel whose arm is hurt. And he's like, he can't climb out of here. So he shoots him dead because that guy has no hope, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and we, we, but we see that hope cr- like creep into both of their hearts and like they carry that forward through the rest of the movie. I didn't, I didn't see that when I first saw the movie. Um, I couldn't catch that. And so now I fully appreciate it. Um, the Vader scene, I, I go back and forth with because it's an amazing scene by itself. It feels weird in the movie, like a like it's a section of imperial propaganda. It feels like they felt like they had to put in a lightsaber, like that's kind of the way it felt. Like I love yeah. that scene, but like as you were saying, like it feels like they kind of felt like they had to because it's Star Wars, you know? Like why? Like I feel like they thought like the fans would be like, well, if Darth Vader was in the movie before, why don't we see his lightsaber? Yeah, like you know, I feel like that's yeah. that's like. Kind of what you're saying. Continue. No, I, I agree fully. And they were right. Because <laughs> for a lot of people, that's the first thing that they think of. Uh, so, that, I mean, they were, they were right to do it. It still feels weird to me. Um, but everything else I, I do love. I, I did I did lo- like Tarkin in it. By the way, if you haven't read the canon book Tarkin, highly recommend it. Because I never cared about the character. But it's written so well. And he's a crazy badass like yeah you don't even oh man um so yeah i'm a huge fan of him now 
I will say when Leia says hope, it's only when she mouths the word, I don't feel they sync up right, and it gives me Uncanny Valley vibes, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number five, Phantom Menace. Um, and I go to... I forget, so I'm going to Tucker first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I've been, just like with Attack of the Clones, I've been on both sides of the coin for this one. Um, I used to not like it. I mean, I growing up, it was the first Star Wars movie I ever watched. It's the first one I watched on repeat because I didn't own the other ones yet. Um, so growing up, this was the coolest thing ever to me because I didn't have anything else to go off of. Then as I got a little bit older, I was like, I don't really like it as much. It's kind of boring. I, I can kind of, I'd rather just watch Revenge of the Sith over and over because I'm in fourth grade and that's something I do. Um, but, uh, now, um, when I first, uh, saw Master and Apprentice in a bookstore, um, last month in July, I was like, how come I never knew about this? Like, I knew there was other Star Wars books, but how come I didn't know this one existed? That's so cool. I love The Phantom Menace. I picked it up and I read through the whole thing. And obviously we're talking about the film itself, but I will say after having read Master and Apprentice, The Phantom Menace boosted up my rankings, um, the whole relationship between Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan is really fascinating to me. I love it. I, I love, I, I just, first of all, I love Liam Neeson. That man is a god. Um, <laughs> and seeing their relationship, it, it's very different to Obi-Wan and Anakin and, like, you know, the Clone Wars. And it was very different to Luke and Ben. Um, it's very unique. Uh, and Qui-Gon himself, like, being such a deviant Jedi, the last of, like, some of the better Jedis, before they start, you know, being tricked by, you know, all this Clone Wars nonsense. Um, it, it really makes The Phantom Menace very watchable for me, but some things that you can take away from the movie, or rather, points you can take away from the movie, um, lies in the fact that to a lot of people, and to myself sometimes, depending on my mood, it can get pretty boring. Um, <laughs> a lot of the movie just doesn't need to be there. Um, it it, it kind of drags, and a lot of it, there's not a whole lot of reasons to care about it. There's reasons to care about some of the plot points later, like Anakin's mom, um, when you come back to it in Attack of the Clones, but in The Phantom Menace, there's a lot of wasted air, and there's a lot of wasted air on, is this boy the chosen one? I don't know. We're going to take him anyways. There's a lot of wasted air on midi chlorians, science, all that stuff that you didn't know about before we're going to introduce now, and you're going to appreciate it later, but right now you're not. Um, cause they didn't make it entertaining, in my opinion. That part wasn't that cool. Pod racing, w while awesome, took a long time out of the movie. Um, there was also very little time spent on the whole Sith aspect because the Sith were reintroduced. Um, they were called the Sith. Um, they were, you know, it was a new person. It was Darth Sidious. Back then, um, in The Phantom Menace, as far as I'm aware, people were starting to catch on to the idea that Palpatine might be also Darth Sidious, but back then they didn't really know for sure yet. Um, so you had a whole bunch of mystery about that, but they've had very few scenes. You had Sidious talking to Maul in like two scenes. You had Sidious talking to Newt Gunray in the very beginning. Um, and then later as you go throughout the movie, you don't learn more about them, but what you do know is Darth Maul opens up his lightsaber and tries to slice Qui-Gon, and after that it's on sight. We need, you know, they just need to get rid of this guy. They don't learn a whole lot about him. Um, and the whole like... Also, Brandon, can I swear? Are we allowed to swear on here? I know you did a bit, but uh, I try to keep it toned down, but it's not. It's not bad. Okay, cool. Because the Jedi behind the scenes, they're having a real oh shit moment because they realize <laughs> the Sith are back and they don't know who they're looking at. Um, but you don't really see that in the movie too much. You just see Mace Windu go, "Yeah, we got him." <laughs> you know, he got wrecked. <laughs> um, and and not only that, but um. Something, although it was established later, um, all, like maybe behind the scenes in Attack of the Clones, um, that is also when Count Dooku starts to leave the Jedi Order and become a Sith himself, and we don't see it in that movie. So it becomes kind of... It should have had shock factor in Attack of the Clones if it had been introduced to us before, but instead um, they don't really take that chance and we're just left with there were Sith and there was a Qui-Gon and now there's no Qui-Gon and now there's no Sith. Um... So without, the, without Master and Apprentice, this might be towards the bottom of my list. But with it, I can appreciate the parts that I couldn't appreciate before. And that's about all I've got, got to say about it. <laughs> uh, also, uh, uh, talk, well, first of all, anything Claudia Gr Gray writes is great. Oh, yeah. Read, read all of it. Um, but if you also read um, Queen's Peril, which is, comes after Queen's Shadow, 
but it's a prequel. Uh, it's from like uh, Amidala's point of view and from before that time and also during that time. So you find out what's happening like on the grounds in Naboo during the occupation. It's kind of grisly at certain points, uh, but it also will, will amplify the movie as well. I'll but pick that's, it up. That's why I'm a huge like book stand myself. Uh, your thoughts on it, Fallon? So this is like my guilty pleasure Star Wars movie. Um, I watch it like a lot more often than the other ones, actually. I love Qui-Gon. He's one of my favorite characters. I love Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan versus Darth Maul. Um, I do like the introduction to Darth Maul, but I like, like along with what Tucker said, like he and Sidious like weren't really in it. Like they sit their back, but like, okay, they're just walking around and, and talking, you know? Um, I think that the relationship between Anakin and his mom shows how scared he was, how it, in a way it humanized Darth Vader for me to show that he was a real man who was hurt under that helmet and not just some crazy monster. Like him leaving his mom and the fear he had for her was what kind of started it all. And seeing the way... Pal- Palpatine, you can tell how Palpatine started manipulating him by the end already. You can see the relationship and the attraction forming for Padme that Anakin had that you can tell would really would really um, hurt him in the future because he cared so much. I think that um, Obi-Wan, in my opinion, like I feel like he could have had a little bit of a bigger role in this movie but I understand that a lot of it had to do with Qui-Gon who Anakin trusted and who his mom trusted he died at the end and he had to create a new relationship with someone else like I get that um Duel of the Fates is amazing that score is amazing I think that introducing Tatooine was probably the coolest thing ever in theaters as well as like Qui-Gon saying Obi-Wan like I can only imagine the way people reacted when they were like oh my god like that's young Obi-Wan no way and that's his master um I also love Shmi in this movie I think that she was like portrayed perfectly and I think that she resembled like confidence in Anakin the way I feel like it sort of resembled the way that Leia was so confident in Luke in Return of the Jedi if that makes sense but yeah I think that it's definitely like underlooked and it brings a lot to the table I haven't read like any of the books you guys have mentioned but I do still really like it and I think that it adds a lot to the prequels even though it's really slow yeah yeah definitely i i i love how you talked about um shmi's confidence in him though because that is a huge part because i mean i feel like each trilogy represents i've said this before and i apologize for the listeners who (laughs) listen to me every week (laughs) but um it really brings to mind the, the shakespeare quote of some people are born great um mm. some do great things and some have greatness thrust upon them and i think that's anakin luke and ray um to a t and anakin was born great and shmi knew from from the get-go and that's why she was okay with it she was like no this is this is the, the like, like she knew he was the chosen one oh he's supposed to go with you this is what he's supposed to do let him help you that kind of thing like yeah that's definitely uh, yeah. Part, like part that I really love about that movie. Yeah. Uh, your thoughts on it, uh, Geek Theory? Um, the Phantom Menace was the first uh, Star Wars movie that I'd ever saw in theaters. And so for me, it's lots of memories of like collectors, Pepsi cans and Mountain Dew and like my Jar Jar Binks t-shirt <laughs> where he's like going like this, uh, you know, like um, back when, you know, Jar Jar was kind of cool for half a minute because I was a kid and nobody really cared. (laughs) Um, I, I'm kind of torn. It's, it's, I put an eighth on my list because I feel like overall it it gets, it is a little bit boring. Like 
it's probably one of the most politically driven uh, Star Wars films, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I like politics. I follow along with a lot of stuff that's going on in Star Wars. Um, there's politics in literally every single movie. It's just that it's, it's, it's I remember as a kid, it was, it was, I felt bored. Like I, I remember thinking that Darth Maul was way cooler when I was a kid and then you watch the movie now and you really don't get to know him. And so if I was to really like, just say how I feel, it's that all the cool stuff that's happening at this point in time in the universe, isn't the stuff that we get to see on screen. You know, when, when you think of the Phantom Menace, yeah, you think Darth Maul, but you don't get a lot of him and you don't get much of his backstory, if anything, really. Um, you don't get any Darth Plagueis, and yet that's what you really want because you know he's very present around this period. Um, I wish we could have seen that. Yeah, so, like, there's there's just all these, all these little pieces. I, I think they did a really good job... Um, with with Anakin, I, I loved uh, like Fallon had said. I loved seeing him with his mother, and Jake's awesome. I thought Jake did such a good job. I mean, there was some there were some cringy lines, but that's the writing. Justice um, for Jake. No, justice for Jake. He deserved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, like George Lucas is famous for only saying faster and more intense. No kidding. Now, if you're saying that to Liam Neeson, he'll know what to do with the character. If you say that to a child, to Jake Lloyd, what's yeah. he going to do? Are you an angel? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what he's going to yeah. do. Damn it. I, 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 was, like his optimism still, like as a kid. And I feel like that's kind of a way, like that sort of reflects Luke's optimism. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I think, I, I agree. I feel bad for him. And that's why I say I feel like the writing at the end of the day, it comes down to the writing and because it's not just him. There's lots of cringy lines in there. Um, I, th I, th I feel bad because I was just going to say with Jake, one of the things that like now as an adult, the, he, he pulls me out of the movie only because of jingle all the way. Um, <laughs> A turbo man doll, like it just yeah. <laughs> that's all I hear when I see him on screen, and I feel bad. But I, either either way, Sinbad I, is a national treasure. Okay, <laughs> he taught me that women be shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had a great sitcom. So, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, all all in all, it, I don't rank it very high. I, I enjoy Qui Gon and Obi Wan. I remember as a kid, I thought it was so cool to see Obi Wan as like a really young adult just and very like he was very adolescent in his own way yeah. you know he's not this refined old ben that i was familiar with and so it was really cool to kind of watch that play out and i even still like jar jar binks i, I i'm gonna honestly like if you're if you're it's cheesy humor. He wasn't meant to be this like very like seriously taken character, and and yeah, the humor is not exactly great, but I mean, he's got like one of the coolest. I don't know. He comes from a really cool city. I would love to go there. I'd stay there if they had hotels. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Um, and 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 honestly, he's like he's not. I, I felt like the humor or the character himself doesn't really serve the overall plot of the movie. So he's, you can take him or you can leave him. But at the same time, I, I just, I don't know. I thought I was entertained and I, I, I laughed every once in a while when he numbed his tongue on the pod racer. I, I laughed. I was like, <laughs> Hey, that's funny. You know, it's yeah, it's cheap humor, but you're going to get that in pretty much any movie. So, um, no, it worked out for me. Plus, it wasn't... I didn't feel like it was laugh track comedy similar to how I felt about The Last Jedi. A lot of the, the humor is just gradual. I mean, it, it's it's in the way he... The way he presents himself, the way he walks. He's always fumbling. You can see that even in the Clone Wars series, right? When uh, I was just watching, I can't remember what the episode's called, but where he's uh, where he's mistaken as a uh, as a Jedi. Uh, that's one uh, bombad Jedi. Yeah, I, I just <laughs> laughed my whole way through that movie. I'm just like, yeah, that makes it makes sense though. You expect that from this character, and it works. So, um, yeah. I mean, Mall. Oh, can I go? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, like, as a kid before Clone Wars and stuff, like, when I was, like, really little, like, four, 
like I remember thinking I was like Darth Maul's so cool and then like they just got rid of him you know and like as a kid I felt like they were just getting rid of Sith like it was like one per movie like like even as a kid I was like why is this necessary like until Clone Wars but I was like they introduced this cool character and in the end just like why you know you bring up a really good point and i'm gonna go as far as saying that live action mall just doesn't do it for me and it's only because of the way they After write him Clone wars i feel like though yeah. well like, i i feel like they just do him dirty you don't really get to see much of them in the phantom menace I feel like so you it's don't look so cool and the double bladed like everyone was like oh my god like yeah it's a double bladed lightsaber and then the only other time you get to see him is in solo at the end and yeah. If you're not familiar with what's going on, it's really confusing and doesn't make sense and it feels out of place mm -hmm. because you're not familiar with what's actually going on with that character because he's fleshed so well. Like they, they do such a good job e explaining this character, his backstory, what's going on with him and just like how his mind works in everything animated. Yeah. And then I feel like they drop the ball when it comes to anything live action with him because we really don't know him. Um, I remember, Chaco, you said, you know, in, in Legends, he was just a throwaway character. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're, they're like basically trying to fix that. And it's, they just haven't done it in live action yet. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully we get a way to, to do that because they've, they've done it animated, uh, you know. I'm such a fan favorite via animation though it's it's crazy oh without a doubt yeah, yeah. you know, i would add though um with plagueis um like the book plagueis um the the one thing with maul because of course they described his you know and this is legends you know anyone watching it's a legends book don't take this as fact um because he, he grows up and he's trained to be like a ruthless killing machine but his one problem is that sidious made him prideful which they did not have to do but it makes more, and that's also why Phantom Menace is higher on my list than it used to be. Is because when Darth Maul gets whipped up by the first Jedi he comes across, it's like, yeah, that's because he thought he could take it, but he couldn't. Um, but it, yeah, it does go to show, like, they could have done so much more in the movie. Like, he he did get done dirty. Well, and and that is a huge, I mean, that that's the, the big problem with, which, by the way, I, I love the Phantom Menace far more than i probably should far more than most people do um pod racing is my jam i i played i'm gonna you know what i'm gonna replay that game on, on stream um pod racing you know uh because because i i loved it so much and like it's it's the only like i, I don't even know racing movies that will show all of the laps of the race <laughs> this one showed all three laps without music until the tail end of the final lap uh and that is some of the most hype crap i've ever seen it reminds me of initial d which is one of my favorite all-time animes uh, i used to play jedi power battles constantly that's people are like how come why do you love plo koon so much because of jedi power battles okay <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's not fair because, you know, we had, I had, um, AJ on, uh, Jedi Starkiller, um, and he's the first person to truly say it this way of like, yeah, that movie is weird because there is no clear protagonist and antagonist. It's like, damn it. Did you just ruin this movie for <laughs> 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 It because it, it introduce it does introduce the good guy and the bad guy, but not as the good guy or as the the bad guy, which is which is weird. Um, I, I still love the it's it's a weird story where you're just along this weird journey and this stuff is just happening to you and you're just like hanging in there. Uh, so I I do I do enjoy it. I don't find it to be slow. Uh, and. My, my buddy Isaac, who's somewhere in here but not able to chat, but he says that uh, it's it's more it's relaxing, not slow. So that that is kind of how I feel about about it. I love that last that last fight. It's it's one of the best in the whole franchise. But again, 
fights should serve the story, and there's no story between the fighters. They don't even... This guy just showed up once before, and they're like, oh, no! Uh, we he should... has a red lightsaber! Get him! <laughs> <laughs> and so... so so the analytical part of my brain is like, this doesn't make any sense because we aren't serving any portion of the story here. But then the kid in me is just like, da, 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 da. and then the second half lights up and you're like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, there's no reason that Obi-Wan won the fight. It's that's super weird to me. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That whole scene is like, he looks to his left but he can't see the lightsaber from where he's at. He just leaps up and... <laughs> and then Maul is just, like, standing there. And the angle he leaps up, he shouldn't land on the thing. It's true. Like there's the one leaps and he's like, man, I hope there's something up there that's going to help. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't exactly have the high ground, did he? Yeah. No. <laughs> like... That being said, I love this movie. Also, Ahmed Best is... An amazing actor because we like even if you hated Jar Jar, you hated Jar Jar. You had no thoughts to that there's a person there with real feelings and emotions, and you, you know. So I'm I'm happy that he got some some justice. Um, you know, in in the fact that he's back in the form of uh, like that kids Star Wars show that's like Legend of the Hidden Temple, but Star Wars, which is something I never knew I wanted, and I wish I could become a child again and be on it. Um, but yeah, I I really I I enjoy the movie. It's the prequels were, were weird, uh, because of well because of a lot of reasons, but <laughs> they were, they were just fun, and that's what on some level star wars needs to be is i know i'm the guy that's looking super deep into all this stuff but on some level it just needs to be fun we need to enjoy this ride you know um okay so beyond that we have uh next number four it's a new hope uh and we're gonna go to fallon first on it Okay, so this movie, I I get super nostalgic over this movie because this is the first movie that my dad has ever shown me. I remember like one of my first ever memories of just being alive was I was sitting on my parents' bed and my dad had the idea to show me Star Wars. And he had put it on and the opening crawl came down and he had gone to the bathroom for like two minutes. And I remember... Darth Vader came in and I was so freaked out. I was like three. I was so scared. I was like, this guy looks so cool. And I immediately knew how much I loved it. So obviously a lot of me putting a new hope up so high has to do with nostalgia, but I, it also introduces my favorite character in Luke Skywalker. His story makes me feel like you can come from anywhere and like be some something and someone important. I think that Leia in this story, I'm 19 she was 19 and Carrie Fisher, like starting off the whole girl power thing and a woman being like such a huge part in the rebellion is like awesome for me to see like as a woman. Um, I think that Han is also an amazing character. Han's so funny in this movie <laughs> and he's so clever the lightsaber fight is slow, but I understand that because of, you know, when it was made. The parts in the desert with 3PO and R2 are kind of long. Um, I definitely think that Rogue One adds a lot to this movie and like a lot to its depth as to how, you know, um, and I thought that Obi-Wan's death was necessary. I don't know if other people think that, but I thought it was necessary. Um, and yeah, I think that Darth Vader was set up to be this like crazy evil guy and this super intimidating guy when he really, I don't think he had that much screen time in this movie. So yeah, that it was pretty crazy. And like, just like the way they destroyed Alderaan, I think, was super cool for the time it was made. So I have a lot of positive things to say about this movie and not a lot of negatives. It's just not my favorite, but it's super, super close because I love this era 
I love all the characters. All the original characters are like of my favorites. <laughs> and, uh, so. No, I, I, I love it too. Cause uh, like you said about Vader, they introduce him. Like, I love how each era of star Wars introduces a very clear and simple. This is the good guy. This is the bad guy. The good guy's dressed in all white. The bad guy's dressed in all black. Done, right? And then as it continues, the, those waters start to get muddied and muddied and muddied. And that's kind of what makes it special. But yeah, I, I like how you bring that out because in, in the first film, he is just the, the bad guy. And you end up like finding out that there's a lot more to that, that facade. Um, Geek Theory? When I was a kid, I mean, I loved this movie. Growing up on it, I watched it, I don't know, back to back, like VCR, you know? You put it in, you watch it, you rewind it, you watch it, you rewind it, you watch it. I I, I loved it a lot, but I think as I, I've gotten older and we get more and more Star Wars, it, it, it kind of moved lower on my list. Um, so right now it's, it's it sits about a nine, and I think that's only because every time I watch it, I fall asleep. I just can't help it. I like I go full dad mode. I put it on, and we get about halfway in, and I'm just on the couch. And I don't know if it's because it's just so familiar to me that I know what's happening, and I just like my brain shuts off. Um, because it's like there's nothing like incredibly exciting about the film, but I do think that it really. How do I put this? Uh, I, I will watch the whole the whole thing all the way through if I watch it Rogue One right before it. Right. It just, like I said earlier, I could watch it as one big super movie. Um, but as a kid, I really resonated with Luke Skywalker a lot. You know, just being, you know, as a child, you know, you, you feel like you're trying to find your place in the world and you you really don't belong. Um, maybe you come from really like humble beginnings or or maybe you don't but uh, i mean luke was a farmer and i i i thought that was like just so cool the farmer becomes the hero the 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 guy with the blue lightsaber one day right and uh vader terrified me to my very core when i was a child and i remember thinking like amongst him and like hulk hogan i was like i gotta be as big as those guys when i'm older because i they terrify me <laughs> and uh but all, all in all i i I will always love this movie just because it was well. It was basically what brought me into into Star Wars, and there's very little that the, I feel like they did wrong for the time. Like they weren't trying to overreach with the storytelling. They were the if you watch the movie as a standalone, it really holds up. Uh, you can watch it by itself. You don't need to dig into the, into the lore. You don't have to overanalyze it. It's it's very well done. There's a reason why people loved it when it came out. Um, and uh, I, <laughs> it yeah, it wasn't until I was older that I started to really analyze it or compare it against other stuff uh, in in the Star Wars uh, universe. So, nope, great movie. Um, my kids have watched it lots of times. I've watched it lots, and uh, I, I would say it's a little higher on my list. But I have some other ones. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, again, that's why I always like to point out, like, hey, these lists are what we like the most, right? Just because yeah. it's low doesn't mean that we don't like it. Just because it's not top three doesn't mean we hate it. Um, because I also have this kind of in the middle, and and that's strictly because. This is baseline Star Wars. This is this is where this is the ruler that we use to measure what is and isn't Star Wars, and therefore that that's 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 kind of where it is. But uh, Tucker, what, uh, your thoughts on it? Uh, I think A New Hope is uh, well. When I was little, like I didn't like it at all because yeah, like it, it it it's long. It's 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 boring in some parts. Um, but as I got older, I started to appreciate it more and more. I will say, um, before, like, recently, this wasn't in my top five. Um, until one day I had the idea to marathon the entire original trilogy, and then that's when it became my favorite trilogy. Once I could really place the whole story in a, in a single, like, linear thing, like an open book, it was amazing. And I've loved A New Hope ever since, um, because A New Hope is the ultimate space fantasy. It, some people call it Star Wars sci-fi. I, I couldn't think they're more wrong. It's definitely... A fantasy and a new hope is the ultimate one it has 
you know, the boy coming up from nothing. It's got you open up on the Tantive Four with these two robots talking to each other. You're like, okay, cool, there's robots. And then it's like there's these guys and there's clear bad guys coming in and rushing in and pew 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 pew. Um and it, it's it's great. And some stuff I really enjoy about A New Hope is um you you get to see and that although Luke's arc isn't complete by this movie in any means, and it, it near nor should it be. Um, he starts out as a really whiny kid. You probably don't like him that much in the beginning for your first time. He just, you know, he's trying to waste time with his friends at Tashi Station. He has an annoying voice. Uh, he's wrong about like everything. Um, <laughs> and then by the end, that kid is a bit more grown up. Like he's watched his only family members die, and he he's met with Ben, a guy who he's totally mystified by, and he wants to learn from. Him. He wants to learn about his dad. Oh my God, he was a Jedi Knight. Um, and then, like, Luke has to then watch that hope and that glimmer of the past that he doesn't know about. He has to watch it die in front of him in terms of mm-hmm. Ben being killed by Vader. Um, and then Luke has a totally appropriate reaction. No. Um, and then, you know, that kid's a bit more grown up. And then there's Han Solo. Um, he, he's this crazy cool dude. You don't know if he's a good guy, but they're going with him. Um, he's, he's, he kills a man in the beginning, and he doesn't want to save Leia until there's a financial compensation. Um his so intro is really... him pointing to himself going, Han Solo. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, like, it's a really cool cast of characters. And Princess Leia is literally the, like, the, the damsel in distress, but you go to, they go to save her and she's taking the whole thing, like, she's yeah, taking she the whole thing head on. Rescue. Exactly. Like, she takes over the whole operation. It's the best. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the movie, um, and, it, and I get reminded of this every time I watch it, once they start going to the Rebels and the Death Star and stuff, the only thing I don't like about it is although the movie only runs at, I think, two and a half hours, it feels like it's a five-hour long movie. It feels long. And although I love every second of it, man, some, I want to pull out my phone and, like, wait until the cool part. Um, I don't know why it feels that way. Probably because you think the story is over when Ben dies and they leave the Death Star, but it's not because they still have to destroy the Death Star. Um, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't change it. Um, it just does feel long. And other than that, it's uh, when you get to my final four rankings, I will say, actually, my the final four here is exactly as I had written them. Um, it really is just a mashup of, like, what minor details can you take away the, like from the most from each movie? Because they could all be my favorite, um, especially with The New Hope. It's just that it's the only movie that I feel like is too long. <laughs> Yeah, it's one of those where like uh, it can change. It's its ranking can change on a daily basis, which is which yeah. is totally cool. Um, I will say, thank goodness that that George Lucas didn't do this by himself. George Lucas didn't do any of the original trilogy by himself, because if he did, we wouldn't have Star Wars. He there was gonna be forty minutes of the droids wandering around in the desert. That's what he wanted. 40 minutes. He was so bad at ideas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so if you thought it was long in the movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no. That, that being said, yeah, it's this is the solid movie. This is this is Star Wars. This is where it comes from. This is the baseline. And, and so when, when people ask, you know, why do I have it ranked so low? It's like, no, it's not, it's not that it's bad. Like, this is what set up the world. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's, it's like the quote, you know, if I see further, it's only because I'm standing on the shoulder of giants. It's not that a, a Model T is, is a bad car by today's standards, but that's because of the Model T. <laughs> We've been able to grow, and that's that's how I feel about this this movie. Um, and I mean, you guys hit all the the great parts where this is it is a, a fantasy. Like at this point in time, all of the space stuff is this futuristic, utopian, um, high technology, clean. This was dirty. It was lived in. Um, there was uh, hives of, of scum and villainy and he, it was just different. It was just different all around. And it was a, a wonderful thing. Um, Han Solo, he, you had no idea where, where he stood, you know, um, Princess Leia, you know, Carrie Fisher was just absolute perfect casting. Absolute. Like you couldn't, 
Whew, like, go. I don't know if anyone has read the book uh, Princess Diaries. Actually, Carrie Fisher has a couple books, but Carrie Fisher is real life Hollywood royalty. Yeah. You know, and her being the princess is perfect because how we think a princess would act is not necessarily how a princess would act. <laughs> and she embodies that uh, just expertly. You know, Luke, Luke's journey through this where he's a guy who, you know, again, going back to what I said, you know, some people are born great. That was Anakin. He was born great. Um, mm -hmm. Luke is the one that did great things. He wasn't born great. He was just this, this farmer kid. Uh, but he has this capacity for greatness and he's always willing to try for it. I don't know if it'll work, but I'll try for it. Uh, Red Leader couldn't make the shot. Someone who's vastly more experienced, better pilot, has more, has flown combat before, has flown in an X-Wing before. Uh, and I, I think a lot of, one of the things that people miss is that Luke didn't make the shot on his own ability. Mm -hmm. He trusted in the Force and that was the whole message. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know. I it, it's just it's it's so solid. It's just a great pick. Uh, they did Chewy dirty uh, by not giving him a medal. So that's that's my my <laughs> big complaint. But you know, they also did Chewy dirty by not giving him a character other than one of my. I forgot to mention this. My only other complaint about all of the original trilogy movies, um, but mostly a New Hope actually is that Chewbacca doesn't really have a character. Like, the only character he has is telling um, Obi-Wan where Han Solo is in the canteen, and the rest of the time he's a, you know, like, speak to me if you want someone to disagree with you or agree with you button, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just true. Although, uh, the line, get this walking carpet out of my way, is, is just, is, is, is golden. <laughs> All right, so, number three on our collective list, Revenge of the Sith. Um, and I'll start with uh, Geek Theory this time. Uh, this is my number two. This is my number two. I love this movie. I love what it does and what it represents, honestly. Anakin, you know, some people didn't like Anakin at all in the prequels. I think this is where he shines. Um, I've always said to, like, my friends that Anakin is the perfect example of what happens if you take any one of us and try to make us a Jedi. We all think it would be really cool, but I don't think we we're all disciplined enough to to actually like give in to what the Jedi demand from us. Um, and at the same time, it, it was just, you know, you he's so relatable. Like we all have been there, you know, you, you, you're so stubborn and you want, you make a decision and it was the wrong one. And now you have to live with the consequences of that decision for the rest of your life or you have to live in the, the the view of what people see you as because of the choices that you made, including the people that you love and care about. Um, and, and without a doubt, like I think of like being a dad and it's like, okay, well, if I had to like feed my kids and push came to shove, you know, would I steal cheese and bread to make it happen? Like by all means necessary, but I do everything I can to, to give them everything that they need. Well, that was Anakin. He did everything that he believed that he needed to do. The only thing he needed to do in that whole movie that he doesn't do is trust in the force period. Like if he would have just left things well enough alone, it probably wouldn't have been so bad. Like, you know, it, it really like, I, I'm going to say, you know, he was, he was done in for a long time before this movie takes place, but you know, he has a bad dream and all of a sudden it's, I got, I got to fix this and I got to do that. And, you know, lots of Jedi have bad dreams, yo. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're not the only one to have visions, my friend. Always <laughs> in the future, the, the motion, always in motion, the future is, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so, but, but it's still, it's, it speaks to me in such a way that I, I really resonated with the film. I, yeah, I went and saw it in theaters, um, saw it a couple times in theaters and I just, I loved watching, I, I, I said it a while ago, I love the slow burn, you know, <laughs> You're, it's, it's not a, it's not a one minute. He's this good guy, this very honorable dude. He's, and then all of a sudden he's a bad guy. It's, there's very specific progression that you're witnessing right from when he's nine years old to now that's been just kind of going on and you're only getting glimpses of it until this movie and it's like okay 
I think that's also one of the reasons why I never really understood him, like his and Padme's relationship. It's so self-serving to him, you know. Um, the only reason he wants to save her is because he does he he doesn't want to live without her, you know. What what is he doing for her? <laughs> it's a it's a really weird relationship. But I, I, I outside of Anakin, I love I love pretty much every shot in this movie. I love the fight scene at the very end. I mean, it's one of the most, it, it is the most emotional fight uh, in all of Star Wars, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, watching, Ewan McGregor does a fantastic job just portraying what, what Obi-Wan is feeling without necessarily saying what he's feeling. You, just the pain in his voice. I mean, we've all lost somebody that we, we deeply care about, but to stand right in front like to have them stand right in front of you and watch them just become something that you you just can't you just don't want to see happen and it's uh, it's just so good it's a great movie <laughs> um plus it, it sets us up for for the rest of the series right so if you're an original trilogy fan it sets you up for what you're going to see come those films and uh I think one of the things that I love about Anakin specifically in this movie is that Darth Vader is this monster dude. When you watch the OT, like you're like, okay, he's a big, bad monster. I would not want to be locked in a hallway with him period. Um, Anakin in this movie really humanizes him. So you can kind of see like everything he's doing. The moment that, that Mace Windu dies, you can, and he, he kneels before Palpatine and he, he dubs him Darth Vader. You can see in, 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 in his eyes, like, what did I do? I, I'm in so deep now and I can't turn back. So I have to, I just have to do this. Otherwise he's going to kill me right now. Like that's, what's going to happen here. And um, I really like that they explore further in it or further into it with the comics, but no, great movie. Love Anakin in this movie. Love Obi-Wan in this movie. Uh, I wish I wish we would have had a little bit more than uh, Padme dying of sadness because Pad, Padme is like my favorite uh, female character. She's one of my favorite characters in, in the entire franchise. I wish we would have had a little bit more of her in the OT, but I, I understand that's all in the writing. But uh, yeah, great movie. I love it very much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So here, uh, and your thoughts on it, uh, Tucker? Um, I mean, gosh, there there is so much good to say about Revenge of the Sith. For a very, very long time, until very recently, it was my number one uncontested. Um, the only reason it's not number one is just because I enjoy uh, whatever my favorite my number one is more. Um, I won't spoil it because I already said that it matches. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, Revenge of the Sith is, I, I want to say it's the Anakin movie, but in truth, it's everybody's movie. Maybe not Kit Fisto. Um, he gets sliced pretty fast. Um, but God, there's so much good. I love the beginning. It's so full of action. Anakin's a fully realized Jedi Knight. He's extremely like cocky, but he backs it up. Um, but we get to see him make like, he, you know, you see Obi-Wan's trust and his confidence in Anakin. You see Anakin make a mistake, um, in killing Count Dooku. And that sets the tone for the rest because although it wasn't very, a very costly mistake, he regretted it immediately afterwards. He knew what he was doing is wrong. But exactly like Geek Theory said, like Anakin was doomed from the beginning. Um, and we get to see like from Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, we've noticed how the Jedi are structured. Um, and we get to see that start to topple in on itself. Because although um, like although Palpatine was the main force for driving Anakin to the dark side, um, in you know, in his manipulation and everything, it's also the Jedi teachings completely failing. Um, in the in the one moment when Anakin gets to choose to you know, either defend Palpatine or deface, defend Mace Windu, the one moment where he really gets to choose, make his own decision, he does what the Jedi would have wanted him to do in the past, and he wants Palpatine to have a fair trial. But when Mace Windu, in that moment, finally realizes their mistakes, where he needs to just kill Palpatine right now, um, they can't, like, do this, you know, trial of law and everything that they've been doing in the past. Like, when Mace Windu finally realizes his mistake, Anakin finally goes back to what he was meant to be doing according to the council. And I think that is one of the most beautiful parts of the movie um, because it, and that is the part where if there was any going back, it didn't exist after that moment. Um, and Obi-Wan goes through so much in this movie. Um, Anakin, obviously, like he's a brother to him. He loves Anakin. 
and he has to watch him and slice him up um, by his own hand. There's, the, there's nothing I could say bad about this movie. And it makes me consider maybe I should have put it at number one. Um, just the only <laughs> thing is that I just enjoy my number one a little bit more. But God, there's so much to say about Revenge of the Sith. I love it. There's truly, it, it's a true spectacle of Star Wars for me. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I love how um, uh, Core Gamer Skills, you know, talks about, uh, or I'm sorry, this is a Star Wars scholar talks about how Ian McDermott, Dermot, and uh, Ewan McGregor absolutely aced their performances. I will add a little caveat uh, that Ian McDermott could have done a little bit better while fighting because some of his uh, yeah. <laughs> like his. <laughs> <laughs> some parts of it are cgi like if you'll pause it like his like face is so much clearer than like the rest of his body <laughs> it yeah. is pretty awkward it, it, yeah there's there's some some awesome parts to it but yeah your thoughts on uh on the movie fallon so pretty much you guys pretty much said everything that i've been thinking like this movie it's my second favorite but like there's so much good and little if not if any bad to me this was my favorite movie growing up until recently so like this is my childhood i think to go on what you said before like we see darth vader as a human i feel like we see this movie through everyone's eyes through everyone's perspective so like we're experiencing anakin being manipulated by palpatine in this movie with him we're experiencing anakin's fall through obi-wan which makes Obi-Wan telling Luke about Anakin in A New Hope a lot more emotional. I think that Anakin becoming Darth Vader and after he pledges himself to Sidious in that scene, I think that there are so many cool parallels between that and Luke's Mandalorian scene. I think it shows how similar they were. This movie shows how blinded by emotions Anakin was and how that was his downfall. And you can tell in the beginning, like I said before, in the first movie, we saw how afraid he was to lose his mom. Then he got angry and all it all led up to him becoming Darth Vader. And then he was terrified to lose Padme. And it was the same thing again. He was angry at Mace Windu. He was angry at the council. He just had so many emotions that he never stopped to really think, hey, Maybe I can fix this in a different way, but I feel like there really wasn't, like, I feel like he felt that there wasn't anyone he could have gone to for help because his marriage with Padme wasn't legal, you know? So who was supposed to help him other than Palpatine, who he viewed as a father figure at that point? He says to Obi-Wan, I can't, betray him i don't want to spy on him he's like my father he's mentored me and you're expecting me to betray him so i just think that the whole thing building up between him and palpatine and just seeing the way he was manipulated and then seeing the way palpatine took anakin in after dooku you see that again in return of the jedi when he's like i don't want you anymore darth vader like i want luke like it's just so ironic how palpatine just plays like puppet master with these people and anakin is too naive and cocky to realize what he's actually getting himself into yeah a a absolutely and like so this this is a movie that oddly enough makes me really like kylo ren because it's a similar journey but the it's it's taking the the left turn instead of the right turn at the end it's the uh oh well the emperor i can overthrow him you know it's that scene but like what what would happen on the other side um but i i also love it because like man anakin started out so pure and so like he he's a slave and he's willing to not only put his pod race that he spent his hard time spare time and money into building um yeah he's willing to toss to get to lose that ship to risk his life and to give them all of the winnings 
and we see him slowly get more and more selfish. And also, I invite you guys to rewatch the movie, but look at his conversations with Padme as bookends to his slow descent. And it's, yeah, it's it's crazy because his descent is not rapid at all in this film. Not to mention, if you read the Nat, the Matthew Stover novelization, it's incredible and it makes this movie like 10 times better. Highly recommend. It's one of the best books I've ever read. Hard stop. Um, yeah, no, I, I love, I just love watching this, this journey. Uh, and the fight at the end, yes, there are times where the fight gets to be a bit much when they're swinging on ropes and stuff. And I'm like, uh, all right, this is kind of crazy. But for for the most part, uh, and, and my, so my brain is just naturally super nitpicky. Mm-hmm. So I, I watch and I notice suddenly Palpatine has Anakin's hilt while he's fighting Mace Windu and it irritates me. Um, or there's like weird. What? I've never noticed that. Oh yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, I didn't notice it. At the beginning of the fight between Palpatine and Mace Windu, he's holding Anakin's lightsaber hilt, but it has the red blade. Whoops. And I'm always, I'm like, huh, that's huh. super weird. But again, that's just like I, I notice all of this stuff. It's not relevant to the movie, so it doesn't matter. Like. I, I don't know if that day in costume they just grabbed lightsabers and just went for it, or or maybe that wasn't <laughs> maybe that wasn't intended to be the take that they would use, um, but then they ended up deciding to use it. I don't know. Lo- there's a lot of possibilities, but yeah, all, all in all, this one is a fantastic movie. Um, there's not much much more to say than that. It is my number four, and not because I don't love it, but. I just I just love other things more. <laughs> exactly. Um, oh, sixty six yeah. is fantastic. I feel like none of us really touched on that, but like yeah. I was so like just like wowed when I saw that. Just the way they turned on them and just killed everyone. Like that's a really powerful scene, and that's I think one of the best scenes in the whole saga with the music and everything. Mm-hmm. It just shows how powerful Palpatine really was because like like we had known that he was super powerful but now we really learned that he was in fact behind everything yeah and yeah, yeah. his his <laughs> plots his his hooks were in so deep and that's when you know that's why Mace Windu was willing to bite the bullet like if Mace Windu had a killed Palpatine he probably would have been executed or put in prison for the rest of his life. Um, and so that's why like this movie is is so much deeper than the others of the prequels because there's a lot of extra stuff involved. It's never it's not covered at all in, in the film, but as you're watching it, you you you're just watching this whole thing unravel and yeah, you're watching it crumble like you're watching that's a tragedy. Yeah. The, the questions of what what is the right course of action and what is the good course of action are two very different things. And I find that fascinating and very difficult to portray on screen, but they, they did it extremely well. Uh, it's hard to display that without being in a book where you can hear what someone's thoughts are. You have to just portray that through your facial expressions on screen, and I think they killed it. Um, our, our number two film was Return of the Jedi. Uh, this was my number one for a very long time. It has slipped since then, but yeah, Return of the Jedi is just is just aces all around. Uh, Geek Theory, your thoughts? Return of the Jedi. Uh, uh, it's my number four. It, it used to be in my top three when I was a kid growing up. Um, but yeah, this is this is where we get to see you know mature Luke Skywalker. Uh, it, really refined or at least what he believes is really refined i sometimes i I chuckle a little bit because he he like takes himself very seriously the way he carries himself and and speaks and i'm just like i don't know i don't know if i buy it yet you know when he goes when he confronts java you're like and (laughs) just like i don't know i don't know um you were just screaming in the last movie at the end (laughs) like (laughs) 
But uh, but it's really cool because we get a different Luke Skywalker in every single one of those films. And so it's really cool to see him kind of flourish based off of his training. Uh, you can see that he trusts in the Force a lot more. Um, I love the Sarlacc pit. Like, that's such, like such a cool scene. When you get Boba Fett, you get Han Solo. Um, everybody's got their, their part in, in that fight, and I think it's really cool. Um, and I love... I loved the ending as a, as a kid, uh, you know, watching, watching Darth Vader, you know, he takes off his, his helmet after saving his son. And, you know, I just want to, like, he wants to look at his kid before he dies. And uh, without the knowledge of the prequels or anything that comes after, you just, it's, it's kind of like a really touching moment as a kid, you know? Um, I just, I loved it. I loved, I enjoyed the Ewoks when I was a kid. My, my mom liked them. I don't really care for them too much now. I could live without them. It's not a big deal. Um, <laughs> but uh, overall, the whole film is just, I, I would say it's one of the smoothest from start to finish to watch all the way through. It's its fun. It, I don't feel like there's really a slow pace to it at all. It's its action scene after action. It's its a lot of fun. Um, and, and yeah, Darth Vader. and uh, Yeah, Darth Vader. Luke and uh, and the Emperor at the end is one of the coolest uh, finishes to any of the Star Wars films that, that we've ever seen. So, the fantastic, fantastic movie. Yeah, a core gamer skills in the chat mentions how like it is um, the end of the hero's journey. Like it's the the return with the elixir for both Luke and Anakin in the same film, which is uh, very unique. It's not something you see on on a regular basis. Um, also, okay, so this is something I, I, I do maintain, is that, um, the Ewoks have this burden of what you needed to portray the Ewoks. So to me, when I watch it, like, if you watch it as, like, a filmmaker, yes, these are little people in costumes. But, a bear that size is strong as hell. <laughs> <laughs> way stronger than like an, a, a human would be and if that bear could use a spear and set traps you are screwed imagine g going in the woods and a bear that's way stronger than you is has enough sentience and opposable thumbs like you it's it's game over <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean that's why that's why the ewoks get a pass from me but uh your thoughts on it tucker um, yeah, I mean, Return of the Jedi used to be my least favorite of the original trilogy because, actually, because of the Ewoks, I felt that it dragged a little bit. I felt that it took the pace out of the movie. Um, but they don't—they just don't bother me anymore, simply. Um, but the reason why this is my second favorite is probably just because I'm a Luke simp. Um, <laughs> because I adore Luke's arc from A New Hope to Return of the Jedi. Um, in A New Hope, he doesn't even use a lightsaber against anybody, and he, he watches people die. And Empire Strikes Back, he decides to finally try and do something about it, although he fails again. Um, but he tries so hard. Um, and then we, we know in Return of the Jedi, I don't remember if they say it or if I just know it because I've seen the movie, but we know that he's been gone for a while. He went back to train on Dagobah. He promised that he would at the end of Empire. Um, and he comes back with a new hairdo. He, he's force-gripping Gamorreans. Um, like it's no big deal. He's got no Chanel boots. Out. Exactly. He's got the Chanel boots. And he comes out and he talks different too. And he's like, greetings, exalted ones. Ah, blah, 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 blah. And he, it's the coolest thing in the entire world. He ex exudes confidence and power. Um, and for that alone, going from like someone who again wants to waste time at Tashi Station with his friends on Tatooine, um, who wants to go to the Imperial Academy to a fully realized Jedi Knight. Like, this is what a Jedi Knight was and is and should be. It, it's obvious. Power, confidence. He tells Java, like, this is your last chance, Java. He says it, like, twice, actually, I think. Or, we will have to kill you. Um, or, like, or you will die. Or something like that. And it, it is amazing. And I do feel like every other character in this movie, Lando, Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, well, if Chewbacca had a character, um, all of them are just this beautiful rainbow of storytelling. It, it gets, it gets me so hard. I love this movie. Um, and it, it, when Luke is on the second Death Star, which I will say one thing to take a, that a points taken away from the movie 
um, it doesn't bother me, but I have to address it, is that the idea of just there being another Death Star, while realistically it makes sense that they'd be building multiple of the thing, um, it's a little lazy. It, back then, they could have done something different. But in terms of real lo- world like realism, it makes sense that they'd have two of the thing because um, it was so powerful. Um, but when they're on the second Death Star, and it, again, this is all about Luke for me, um, and Luke is having the biggest struggle he's ever had because he you can see in his movements like and he's trying to strike down vader he's not exactly and and i should also mention the conversation that takes place right before when he's talking to vader he's like you were once anakin skywalker you have only forgotten and stuff like that and it's like, that That's name has no meaning for down. me anymore yes <laughs> um god i love that scene because it's, it's darth vader also completing his arc just like he said um and he's it, you see doubt in Vader, and although we literally can't see his face, um, he he he's not as witty, he's not as quick, and he's like he's not exactly saying he's gonna have to defeat Luke, but he's like, please, like let it be this way. Um, and then Luke goes up, and he's still determined to save Vader, but for a second there, he lets it slip, and he's trying to kill Vader. He does chop off his hand, and it's only when Palpatine reminds him of the situation he's in that Luke is like, no, I won't do it. I will not turn. Um, and gosh, it, it's very, it's a very beautiful movie. And the only reason that it does not trump Empire for me is because of the Ewoks. Because I do get a, they're less entertaining to me <laughs> than every other part. That's the only reason. It's a beautiful movie. Hey, Chaco, I'm going to step away for just one second. I have to take a phone call. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I hear it keep popping off, so you're, you're all good. <laughs> um, uh, your thoughts on it, Fallon? So, Return of the Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie, and it's probably the movie that I watch and rewatch the most often. It always has been since I was pretty much in high school, and I had just realized that it was my favorite. I, too, am a very large Luke Skywalker stan, <laughs> and Luke Skywalker in this movie is my Luke, and it is, I believe, his truest form and my, my favorite version of him. And just seeing the development that he had among the three movies is crazy. He comes into Jabba's palace wearing all black, hood up. He's he's choking them out when he walks in. Like, Luke on Tatooine before, he wasn't like this, you know? This whole movie, I feel like it's sort of, like, overlooked. But he's fighting the dark, too. Like, he's, he's, like, like, there's a shot when Vader and Luke are fighting, and, like, Luke goes to hide, and Vader starts talking about Leia, and he's, like, okay, well, if you don't turn, then your sister will, and half his face is blue, and the other half is red, and that shot is insane, because it shows how he, all he really wants is his family, but, like, he's so like good like he's so like naturally optimistic and a good person and this movie also like just keeps developing han lando becomes a likable character in this movie like lando betrayed them in empire and lando became my favorite character like like one of my favorite characters in return the jedi and we learn that leia and luke are siblings and that moment between them is like insane and when yoda says no there's another and luke's just like hold on leia and then leia's like i always knew and it like like i feel like it just shows us so many things about the force that we didn't know before like how did leia know like how did leia how could she tell and the fight between luke and vader at the end is my favorite lightsaber fight i love the whole anakin coming back to save his son thing it it truly redeems him and it really shows that all he wanted to do was keep his family safe and he loved his family and i he was just so clouded by judgment and emotions and manipulation that once palpatine was gone and once he realized that there was someone else that was there for him other than palpatine that maybe he made the wrong choice Because I think that when Luke confronted him in that tunnel before, like when he had 
surrendered himself and he said that my father is truly dead i think at that point anakin was like wow like that's my son telling me this right here like this is padme talking to me right now and i think he saw a lot of padme in luke throughout this film because all he ever said is there's good in you there's good in you and that's what padme was saying to him on mustafar this isn't you, you know? So I think that it's an amazing end and wrap up to Anakin's story. And just the final scene with Luke lighting it on fire and then seeing them, seeing them at the end, it's like one of my favorite scenes, if not my favorite in all of Star Wars. It's, it's one of those things that's like cumulative as well. Because yeah. it's amazing seeing, you know, that, that scene where it's, it's Vader and he's on the pyre, but... Um, when you watch the Phantom Menace and you see that that's how how Qui Gon was, it makes that even more impactful because he gave him a true Jedi funeral. Uh, because you know, Return of the Jedi, the Jedi that returned was was Anakin. Um, God, you know, there's there's so much I I love about this movie. Like you guys were just really, just just nailing it. There's the, the only thing I can really fault, kind of is in the original trilogy, all of the character, all the development of the characters happens off screen. Yeah. Um, and in each of these films, when Luke comes, he is a different person. And then we see the catalyst for change, but we don't see the change. He just comes back in the next one. And then he's, he's a different person as well. But, um, you know, what you were expanding on with, uh, with Vader and especially, I don't know if you guys follow Victoria Vader or V Vader on um, on TikTok. She's amazing, and her Vader content is just literally the best thing in the world. But yeah, when she talks about it, um, Anakin just wants all, all of them, all of like all these characters just want their family. All I want yeah. is my family back. That's why I'm here. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. And that's, you know, Lucas doing this for his father. Uh, Anakin comes back for, for, for his, for his son. Um, Ray is doing this because she just wants family. She just wants people around her and finds out, yeah, your family are garbage people. And she's like, uh, well then I have a different family now. Um, I get to choose my family because what I have is trash. Uh, and all of these messages are just like, I don't know. They're just they're just tied up, uh, so so beautifully. And I, 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 I yeah, I love that Vader. Like one of one of my favorite details about Vader is, and although it's like it's kind of obvious, it is that Vader, he had, like he had his mom that went away. He had Padme that went away. We know uh, they didn't know this back then, but we know he had Ahsoka and that went away. And mm-hmm. especially with season seven, that's even more heartbreaking. Um, he had Obi Wan and that went away. Um, although he didn't, he was killed by Anakin's hand. Um, he probably would have desired a different ending with Obi Wan. And then finally, out of nowhere, like he learns. I mean, it wasn't in Return of the Jedi, but he learns that Luke Skywalker is his son. And in that final conversation, he sees like, like this is everyone I've ever loved in one person, yeah. and that is what is required to make him change. Like the evil, like overlord of the dark side. Like all he wanted was like the love of family back in his life and that i think is like one of the yeah, coolest plus, parts it's so the plus him at the end of return of the jedi when like luke takes off his mask and he says tell your sister that you were right about me it's like that's when you can tell he really cared he really like regretted everything that he did and like he felt bad and he was so sorry and you can tell in his face and like when luke starts crying it's like your father was such a bad man to the people that you loved and to you at times, but you look past that because like, that's your father and they both like let their differences aside for that last moment. And it's so like touching. Yeah. It, it, it also makes me think of the, the short story in from a certain point of view in Empire Strikes Back where it talks about um, as a, as a child, Anakin, like he, left his mom and he went with Qui-Gon and then Qui-Gon died and then he's left with Obi-Wan this new guy he wasn't Obi-Wan wasn't around when he left and so 
uh, Obi-Wan talks about how he'd wake up in the middle of the night and Anakin would be asleep at the foot of his bed because he was afraid that he'd wake up and Obi-Wan would be gone too. And you're like, oh, <laughs> don't do that to me, Obi-Wan. Like, come on. Um, all right, so final movie. And I, I, I'm so, this conversation has been, been awesome. I apologize. I know you guys have stuff to get to. Um, <laughs> final movie, The Empire Strikes Back. Surprise, surprise. It was our collective number one. Um, yeah, let's let's jump into our, our thoughts about that. And now we're going to come to uh, Geek Theory first. Oh, man. This has been my favorite movie since I was like, well, since I saw it, basically. Um, this movie changes everything, like everything. And if you watch the prequels, you just get more context. If you read a comic book, you just get more context. If you watch everything that takes place after this movie, you just it just makes it even better. But quite literally, everything changes in this movie. Now, when I first watched it as a kid, I remember... You know, you don't see, you don't see the, I am your father, you know, you don't see that coming, period. Like when I was a kid, did not, and I just remember being like, no, that's awful. Why would they do that? Like make the bad guy the, his daddy. Okay. This is going to be interesting. But it's knowing what I know now in the prequels, it gives so much like further depth to the character of Darth Vader because in my mind, when I watch Return of the Jedi, you see An like you see Anakin kind of come back, right? At the very end. And that's really the only like pull to the light that you really get from Vader until I started like watching like I re-examined Empire. Of course he wants his son to be with him. Anakin is driven on emotions and all sorts of relationships throughout his entire life. So it makes perfect sense that, hey, there's my son. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to, I want, I need something. I need him because that's just Anakin. That's, that's in his nature. He wants, he wants to take care of the people that, that he loves, that, like his family. And he wasn't able to do that before. So, um, and we know now that we know that Darth Vader uh through various different points in his uh his transformation has moments where he does feel a pull to the light i mean even when he you could go to the comic books and you look and you see when he gets his uh his kyber uh, and he decides he's going to bleed it he has a moment where he has a vision of okay what if i go back and i kill palpatine yeah and then he just gets rage angry and and bleeds it anyways right so you you get all these really cool things in an empire that's where you you really i don't know i saw darth vader in a completely different light with all that context because you can see that he's already being pulled to the light by asking his son to be by his side so they could basically take over and kill uh the emperor um it might not be the perfect light side story but in his eyes that's what that's what it is right the rest of the film though is just non-stop awesome to me you know i go back to the very beginning when ron hoth hoth is epic i wanted to be in one of those like i wanted to be a part of that scene when i was a kid i would reenact it out in the snow with my friends we had so much fun and uh and then you get um what should i call it uh the, the the han solo and and leia scenes in the little like the hallways yeah, the tunnel, and stuff yeah. yeah you know it's just it's just cute and and i i just love leia's character and in a lot of ways she's just like her mother you know and in, i felt like in empire you really get to see that they do a really good job of of kind of carrying over those two characters even though those movies are completely like they were written in completely different times right so there was no thought of Padme while they're while Carrie Fisher is acting out uh, a Leia. So it was it was really great. Um, you know, we get we get the end scene. Obviously, everyone talks about you know Luke losing his hand, but we also get to see just how powerful Leia and Luke's connection is um, through the Force. And that wasn't something I I really expected at all. And I always thought it was really cool because it. They, they further examine that as you get into the sequels. And uh, all in all, this movie is, 
I think it will always be my favorite. It just stands out as like it's it stood the test of time as a great Star Wars film, a great fantasy film. Um, the acting is is great. I love I love every scene with Yoda because <laughs> he's not he's not the Yoda we're used to in the prequels. We get this quirky little you know frog dude, and I I, I don't know Dagobah is like home to me because mm-hmm. it, it, it's like it's like that slice of it's like that slice of cheesecake that you just you know you just want you just want it it's so good it's i, I don't know <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I love i love empire so much it's just it's great i love watching luke struggle with his his own emotions his own inner battle as as he's trying to learn the force i mean clearly he he doesn't have the patience with his training and he, he's frustrated and he just wants results he wants the he wants the fast and easy solution to everything and and just like his father, he makes a choice and he has to live with the consequences of that decision. And you see that at the end of the film. And and it's, you know, we, we say it all the time. Star Wars mirrors itself. And I, that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all. This They did such an amazing job telling the story of, of not only Anakin in these movies, but also you focus on Luke and Han and, and Leia and... I don't know. It's just it's just good. As you can see, I'm just like, oh, I love that movie so much. <laughs> yeah, no, I <laughs> like, like there's I can't think of things that I don't like about it because it was just it was just good. I mean, it's the movie that helped bring us the song Seagulls for crying out loud. So Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I I yeah, yeah. I I told I God, I, I love I love Empire so much. Until last week, it was it was my number one pick, and like there's so many like little nuggets that go into it. And I'm always curious about when I one of my first questions is how people got into Star Wars because I'm curious on these different views because that this was my introduction to Yoda as this super weird little like crazy. <laughs> swamp frog dude and i still laugh hysterically every time i see him like you know try to eat his food it's like "Ah, how do you get so big eating food of this kind and like i still laugh hysterically at that whole part i never saw him like seeing him in the prequels where he's like calm and collected like he actually is was jarring to me and i'm curious how it's like to people who started out with this other vision of him uh, but yeah, uh, Tucker, your thoughts? Uh, Empire is it, it's it, it's truly I said A New Hope is the ultimate fantasy movie. Empire is truly the ultimate fantasy sequel and it just outdoes A New Hope in every single way. You, the movie starts we're on a new planet. Luke is clearly older. He He's talking a bit more sophisticated. He's doing his own thing. He's going out to find this probe droid or whatever it was. I don't remember if that was an actual asteroid at that point. Um, I don't know why I'm forgetting that, but, um, <laughs> you know, and then he, he uh, we see him use a lightsaber for the first time and he, he force pulls it to him. Um, he is the guy with the lightsaber now before he had a lightsaber, but he didn't use it, but Ben did. And now he's the one he has taken that position. So we can only go higher than that from this point. Um, and obviously we've got Han Solo. He's just some smuggler. And although he did come back to help with the Death Star, he's trying to get out of it now. He still has that price on his head from Jabba. Um, and he's trying to leave, but he's not trying to leave without a goodbye kiss. And that is like one of the most, like the coolest things. Like he's just a cool dude. Yeah. Um, and Leia, of course, you know, um, you know, I, I will say looking back, you know, he on solo is not a, exactly a good person. I will say he, he's definitely trying to pressure Leia into giving him a kiss when she clearly, clearly is not interested, but she gets there. She gets interested. Maybe she was at that point. I'm not to say for sure. I'm not Leia. Um, <laughs> and then Luke goes to Dagobah, and of course we meet the little ketamine frog himself, Yoda. Um, and <laughs> Yoda is my second favorite character, and everybody thinks I'm talking about the prequels Yoda, but I'm not. My favorite Yoda is Empire Yoda, because man, is he fun, and he's like the most unexpected wise person. And Luke has to learn from this guy, and again, like he's clearly not ready, but he wants to be ready. He is. He is trying. And Yoda knows all the answers, but he doesn't really believe in Luke. Um, and he tests him by being a weird, crazy monkey frog in the beginning. And he's like poking R2 
um, to test Luke's patience and stuff. And in the end, he's seen, like, you see him as the most wise person. Like, um, he talks to Obi-Wan like they're very old friends, like he was there the whole time. Um, and there's nothing about that I will stop enjoying. And then Luke, Han, Chewbacca, and Lando are all, like, such an enjoyable set of characters together. And although the first couple times I watched Empire, I didn't like Lando because, again, like, hey, you betrayed the people I enjoy watching. Um, you know, Lando, he's also just a guy trying to make his way. He's trying to run up on the next scam, but he's a good guy. Um, he, he tells him, he was like, Han, I didn't mean to, like, they got here before you. Um, and also him calling him Han is, like, the funniest thing. Like, it's such, every, <laughs> every character is just so full of character. It's true, like, like I said with Return of the Jedi, it's a rainbow of storytelling. Um, and Bespin is beautiful. Uh, everyone being there, and then all of a sudden Darth Vader is there. It's terrifying. It's truly terrifying. They really hit the nail right on the head with the aura and the mood. Um, and then Luke is like, I have to go. Like, I have to go save him. And he doesn't trust the wisdom of Ben and Yoda. But then, like, who knows what would have happened if he didn't go. But he really, like, it shows he wasn't ready. Although he's come so far, there's still more to be achieved. And it's very clear. And it shows Luke that, like, you never should have tried to mess with Vader. Because Vader was really... You can see Vader using one hand to fight him most of the time. He was playing with him. It, it was child's play. Um, and yeah, the Luke and Vader scene. He wants him to join him. He wants Luke to join him. And then, and then Luke jumps off and Vader's like, uh, what the freak? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you could exit that way. Um, <laughs> His reaction was just like... <laughs> he's like... <laughs> just... <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> like he looks at the camera like he's on the office. Yeah, um, he, he was the mic drop, like. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, no. It, uh, I will never not enjoy a good sit through of Empire. There, there's. It's the coolest. It's just. <laughs> it's the the epitome of a cool movie, and when it's you, really the best. When you mention Yoda knowing so much when he meets him on Dagobah, you know I get I get asked all the time like. Don't you think it's crazy that he didn't mention, like, Ezra or Kanan or Ahsoka or any of these things? And I'm like, well, obviously, you know, we can't go back and change that. But what good would it, like, what good yeah, comes from that? Why would he? Why, how does that, how does that serve Luke in any way? Like, Luke's there yeah. to specifically be trained for himself. Um, and, and Yoda's even reluctant to do that. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to, he's already done this with another Skywalker, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and when, when you, let's be real, when Luke shows up, he, he portrays a lot of very similar red flag traits that Anakin had when, when Yoda was very dismissive of, I don't know if we should be doing this. So of course he's reluctant. Why would he be like, yeah, there's other people out here you should go and hang out with and, you know what they're going to solve all your problems no this wasn't this was not like an ezra or an ahsoka thing to fix this was ahsoka had her chance to try to pull him back to the light she failed you know and we don't know what's happening with ezra <laughs> yeah, so you know it, it made perfect sense to me that why would he? he he just keep that stuff to himself and and rightfully so yeah, I, absolutely. And, and also, while you're talking, to, I, I can't help but think about how um, how the plan to rescue Han in Return of the Jedi was a terrible plan. Like, it, there's so many random bits and contingencies. But to me, that's the point. Again, in, in, in A New Hope, he doesn't destroy the Death Star with his own ability, with his own power. He is the Force. In Empire he doesn't trust in the forest he tries to do it on his own power and what does he get he gets nothing the only time he got saved was using the forest and so when he walks in in return of the jedi he has no idea what he's doing but he's trusting the guidance of the forest and that's why they were successful in the end with again an awful plan it's just a horror oh, yeah. uh, we're just all gonna get caught and we're gonna <laughs> all be executed <laughs> It's going to be great. Trust me. Send fantastic. my droids in first. <laughs> I'm going to make sure they get captured too. Uh, but but uh, Fallon, your, your thoughts hit by Strikes Back? You guys pretty much like hit everything. Just a few things like Yoda. Like what I think is like so cool. 
about Yoda and empires that like we had no idea who or what Yoda was just like Luke so like when Luke shows up there and Yoda like is there he's like I'm looking for a Jedi master like he doesn't know that this little green frog thing is this huge big shot Jedi master and I think that that that's so cool because it shows that like anyone could have been a Jedi but what did he know he didn't really know anything about Jedi I think that him training on Dagobah like you guys said he showed a lot of Anakin and him leaving to go save his friends on Cloud City is a lot like Anakin leaving Tatooine to go help Obi-Wan um, in Attack of the Clones, even though he wasn't supposed to. He was going against what he was supposed to do, but all he wanted to do was save his friends. So I think that this movie, like you said, shows a lot, a lot of the red flags about how similar Luke and Anakin were, and just the way that it explored the relationship between Han and Leia more, because I think that their relationship is super important leading into the sequels with Kylo and all that stuff. And like with Lando, just trying to get along and then Darth Vader showing up there in the dining room and he's like, sorry, man, like they got here right before you. I'm just trying to get along. It just shows that like the Empire was everywhere. You know, like... Yeah. No. By the way. It was this huge thing and I don't know. And the fight between Luke and Vader is so... Um, I love that fight. It, that's one of my favorites. And just the look on his face. Like like when Vader asks Luke to join him so they can overthrow the Emperor. It's the exact same as him telling Padme, I can overthrow the Emperor. Like, it's the same thing. He just wants to be with his family. And like, little parts of Anakin are shown throughout Darth Vader but you don't realize that until you watch the prequels and you watch Return of the Jedi and you rewatch them. And just the look that he gives when Luke falls, I love it. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, like, yeah. Wow. He's really like, wow, like, I don't have anyone except for the Emperor. Like, nobody wants to be with me. Anakin I just... is so yeah. extra as a person. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, the reaction is it's akin to the the first movie where he like throws the cape as he like walks off. You're like, oh, come <laughs> on, man. Well, he's he's always been very dramatic. We we saw that. Oh yeah. In Rogue wonder... One, he turned off his chest plate so that he could have a more dramatic entrance. True. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Go ahead, geek. Oh, I was just going to say, can uh, can I just say how bad I feel for Yoda in all of all, like, in all of this? Because not only does he go into exile, like, because he's, like, you know, he needs to rethink his, like, pretty much everything. And I'm sure he felt a lot of, a lot of guilt for what happened, especially after Order 66. Um, but it seems like at every turn, some, some Jedi guy is trying to reach out to him. Whether it's in Rebels or it's in the you know the OT trilogy, and he just kind of has to like mitigate everything, <laughs> and and I just like I feel bad because leave the dude alone, you know <laughs> he's already huh. tried to do what he could. So, but yeah, I, I I love back to what you guys were saying the theatrics. I was just thinking about uh, I was just thinking about when he comes down on a Tie Fighter. <laughs> In Rebels. Oh, yeah. And, and he he's clearly has to use the force to get his cape to do its little... Because <laughs> yeah. there's no wind. like. And you know, in his head, he's thinking, all right, don't move yet. They, did they say me? Did they say... Okay, cool. I can move now. Like, do you think they have, God, like, weekly... I look so cool right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think Do you think they had, like, a monthly or, like, a, a quarterly budget meeting for all of his theatrics? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like... Padme would be chilling. I would be digging this so much. <laughs> Uh, no, I, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, one. Of, I think one of the greatest scenes in all cinema is in Empire Strikes Back when the door opens and it's Vader there. <laughs> and like, first of all, that's not how you want to meet a girl's parents. And, <laughs> uh, and because of what you were saying, Fallon, you, I, I'm now going to make the TikTok when with the prompt. You know, what's what are two scenes that have the same energy? I want to use that and also in. 
it's in in the first Spider-Man movie where he opens the door and it's <laughs> and uh it, the girl's dad is the bad guy and you're like yeah. oh this is bad news <laughs> It's very, very, very similar. Um, Not to mention with the theatrics as well, Han Solo immediately tries to shoot Vader. Boom. Yep. Hand. He could have just, he could probably have dodged it or something, but he had to make sure he got it with his hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I could have sure to show off. He's yeah. So extra. <laughs> um, and then Boba Fett walks right in, and, and that's the scene where I, I'm i still trying to figure out who shot him in the dick. I, I gotta know. Um, yeah. But... <laughs> Hoping for Hondo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, man, I, I love this movie so much because it's the exact inverse of what you would expect. Like, the big... That guy's win. The bad guys win in this yeah. movie. A, the bad guys win. B, the the big battle scene is right in the beginning of the film, mm-hmm. um, and his fight with Vader gets smaller and smaller and smaller and more self contained and more personal, and then the hero tries to kill himself. You know, he doesn't know what's <laughs> down. He's just like it's true. <laughs> he's uh, like, that's down, he's like, whatever's down there is way better than what I'm looking at. <laughs> And he gets basically caught by a coat hanger. My dad just cut off my hand, so I'm gonna jump to my death. <laughs> it's, I don't know, it's it's the it's the um. Uh, <laughs> so basically, he's he's as extra as his father, and he doesn't know it. Yeah, that's the same as when Luke is like, like blah blah blah, and Yoda's like, oh, and he just dies. <laughs> like he just, he'd rather <laughs> pass away than keep listening to Luke. <laughs> That, that scene is the, you have made me very desperate. <laughs> uh, so I, yeah, I just, I just love this film uh, through through and through. It's funny is I, I would watch this on a daily basis when I was little and I can't anymore because it's too important. Like, so this movie to me is a, is a nice steak dinner and you can't just have that every night. You, you know, like there's certain movies, Solo to me is is a hamburger right you, you have a hamburger you turn on the tv you're just like chilling whatever this is a steak dinner you you picked to cut a meat yourself you cooked it with love and you gotta sit there and you gotta enjoy it and so now it's one of my least watched because <laughs> because you can't just watch it for me at I least agree with that. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But awesome. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I know this has been a, a longer one. Oh. I, I was like, I wasn't quite sure how long this would take because this is a, a different than what my most of my podcasts are. But I want to go around and um, so let's let's hit this all on, on, on this last round. I, I want to know if you guys um, three things, right? Any closing thoughts? Where we can find you? And we've been talking about our favorite Star Wars projects. If you can green light any Star Wars project, what are you going to green light? And uh, so we'll go around and we'll, we'll end it on that one. And I'm, I'm going to start with, uh, with Tucker first. Um, closing thoughts. I'm definitely going to try to find a day for me to watch every single movie that I want to watch all in a row. Because I, 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 I haven't watched a Star Wars movie in a minute because I've been pretty busy on other stuff, including like college and stuff. But now I really want to make time for it again. Um, and then I'm sorry. What what else did you ask for? <laughs> no, no. It's it's uh, where can we find you and all your stuff um, and potential Star Wars schools or classes coming back. Uh, and if you could green light your own Star Wars project, what would it be? Right. Um. Yeah. Um. Well, first of all, if I could greenlight a Star Wars project, I I don't know, because honestly, it would have been Acolyte, but now that Acolyte exists, I would probably greenlight something to do with um, a, a greater conflict between a larger number of Jedi and Sith, but with a lot more Sith, because I'm a very big sucker for a Jedi and Sith, just the Force, lightsabers, everything. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys, uh, anyone watching, you guys can find me at, um, at Tick Music on TikTok, and the first I is a one. I'm a nerd. Um, also, the exact same username on Twitch and YouTube. I stream uh, most days per week. Um, and also, um, stay tuned soon because I'm. If you ever heard of that one video I did 
where I did the Star Wars history class, yeah, it number two is coming soon. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. And uh, how about you, Fallon? So wrapping up some of my thoughts from this discussion, I realized that I like The Last Jedi a lot more than I give myself credit for. Like I had a lot of really good things to say about The Last Jedi that like I hadn't really thought about. And I'm definitely going to go watch it and like really appreciate it more because I was like really not a fan of it a year ago now even. And so it just shows the character development. Um, if I could green light my own project, well, like you said, Acolyte, and they were talking about Plagueis possibly being in it, but I would love something to do with Plagueis, young Palpatine, maybe somewhere in there, a young Qui-Gon, maybe a young Dooku oh, yeah. kind of thing, you know, like pre Phantom Menace, that'd be cool. Whether it's a movie or a show, I think that's definitely what I would want to see. And where you could find me, I pretty much only post Star Wars content as of right now on TikTok, but my username is Anakin Thought, and the O is a zero. Awesome. Uh, no, I've, I've always loved your, your content, Fallon, and I've been I've been waiting to have you on here. There's, there's a lot of awesome creators. I apologize it's taken so no, long, but, but really I love you. <laughs> and uh, how about you, Geek Theory? uh closing thoughts you guys have given me so much stuff to like think about as far as a lot of these movies go i've been like keeping notes <laughs> of like what tuck liked what fallon had to say like i just wanted to like so i'm gonna i'm gonna have to do exactly what tuck said and, and sit down and actually watch i'm gonna have to re-watch a lot of these just to kind of see how everybody's perspectives kind of flow into these films um it was really cool to see just how like what what people liked versus what people didn't like because that's always going to vary uh regardless of what franchise you're talking about or what movie you're talking about so that's really cool um <clears throat> as if i had to green light a project i'm i'm honestly i'm torn between two so the first one i'd i'm a big old republic guy i love the old republic and um so i would love to see whether it's a standalone movie or a trilogy I would love to see something about Darth Bane and the rule of two. And I think it would be really neat to explore the Sith uh, in a way we've never really seen before. I'm hoping that we get some of that with Acolyte, but I would love to go back further and really kind of establish that. And then uh, the one that I'm really hoping for the most, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. And it makes me sad is now that Disney owns Fox I want the prequels and sequels, Family Guy, Star Wars, so freaking bad. <laughs> you don't even know. <laughs> like, come on, Seth MacFarlane, make it happen. Let's go. <laughs> um, but I need yeah, more Oroville. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You guys, you can find me uh, at Geek Theory on TikTok. I'm pretty much, you know, I make a lot of Star Wars content, talk about movie rankings and uh, lots of helpful tips for Star Wars The Old Republic because I play that a lot. Um, and usually I just, I mean, I, I sometimes I talk about other stuff, but mostly it's Star Wars. I'm not uh, I'm not streaming or anything as of yet, but be on the lookout if uh, if that does happen. And I'll probably let you guys know on, on TikTok. I mean, you may be streaming soon because um, I plan to play Swotor with you, and I just moved a couple <laughs> characters over to uh, to Starforge. So, oh, uh, right, right. And that's a whole <laughs> but that's that's a whole separate topic. We'll, we'll go into that right now. I'm gonna no. have to follow your tips because my my the only character I play on these days sucks, and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, we'll touch base and we'll get you sorted out. Awesome. Yeah. The game has changed wildly since I stopped playing it. So, yeah, I'm trying to get through some of the story stuff now. But, um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, for, for, for me, you know, if uh, you guys all, all already know my dream project, which is um, something, which is a story that is starts out with Rey starting out a new Jedi Academy. And what she does is she looks through luke's old jedi notes finds the things that he learned and then we flash back and we see luke in his prime and what planet he went to what group of people he went to what made him learn this lesson 
And so we can use that to frame the future. That's my number one. Number two is I want an anime style General Grievous origin story. Like, I feel like anime is the way to tell the story about this warrior who has this kind of like Sisyphus thing where, you know, he's pushing this boulder uphill and it always rolls back down. Like, he's always trying to become the best. And then he does. And then he gets beat by something better. And so he augments himself, does it again, gets beat. And then then it becomes a Sith. Then it becomes a Jedi. And like, he's just keep going, keep going. Like, I, I. I need to see that, and I think um, Vision, since it's going to be anime-styled, is the best place to do it. Um, again, if you're watching this, you probably know where to find me, but I'm, I'm Darth Draco on, uh, <laughs> on, on TikTok. I'm, I'm, I have a slightly different name everywhere, Darth Chocolate here, um, Darth Chocolate 7 on Twitch, Darth Chaco 7 on <laughs> Twitter, whatever, but I'll, I'll, I'll put the things on, on it, but I just want to say thank you guys for coming out and talking with me. Um, the best part is when we can get uh, the non-toxic side of the community together, we all have wildly different views and wildly different, but the, the funny part, the funny thing about it is what we like and dislike of each movie is pretty similar. There's not that much difference between any one of us. Um, but we have different proclivities and I love that we can like discuss it and just like be excited to check this out again with new eyes. That's my favorite part. That's why, exactly. that's why I'm do, I do this. Like it's, it's the best. Absolutely. Anyways. Go same way. Yeah. <laughs> love you guys. Anyone in the chat, if you're not following these guys, please do. Um, but yeah, may the force be with you. Always. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you.